morning, good morning, good morning, Kevin McCarthy, and welcome to another Dumb Zone Rewind, Dumb Zone Wrap Up, Rezone, whatever you want to call it. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Blake Jones, and I'll take you back through the week that was in the Dumb Zone. Those familiar with the program, this will flow like a normal show, taking segments from each day of the week, plus some smaller bits to get you caught up on the show. Like I mentioned last week, don't really need to tease what's on the show. You can see the chapters, but I will update you on the goings on for us over the next week or so. We get on the DZ RV on Sunday, somewhat bright and not too early as we head west for California. Those interested in meeting up along the way, we will be stopping in Amarillo around lunchtime on Sunday, stopping at Six Car Pub and Brewery. Would love to see you Sandys out there. Then stopping that night in Albuquerque. Don't have a place picked out for dinner just yet, but hit us up if you're out there. The dumb zone at gmail.com. Night two, we'll stop in Bullhead City, Arizona, wherever the hell that is. And finally, Oxnard on day three. Interested in meeting up with us at any time along the trip? Don't hesitate to reach out. Okay, let's get this started the way we normally do. Let's get a weekend check. And for that, we go back to Monday at Zoli's Pizza, where the great Julie Dobbs joined the program. All right, weekend check. I got a brief thing that actually happened late last week, but I forgot to tell you guys about it. Okay. So I'm going to pretend that it happened over the weekend. Uh, recently got my oil changed. Very exciting. Oh, look at this guy. Yeah. Let's see that contract. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I, I waited. <laughs> I didn't even get to like 10,000 miles before I did it either. So I got my oil well, changed at a place. To be three. Nah, it's five. Talk to a car person. They'll tell you five. The oil the, change the, place the people puts that the sticker take you for all your at worth. three. But... So the place I go to, uh, you don't have to get out of your car, which is pretty sweet. It's like a drive-in thing. You know, you gotta wait for the car in front of you, but they don't even have like a lobby. Like it's all in the bay. Yeah. So I pull like up. Like they stand in a hole in the ground. <laughs> Basically. Yeah. So the first person. So the oil change thing is always interesting because it's usually a guy who's a man, uh, and he's a mechanic, and he's sweaty, and he looks like he could probably have my wife. And he knows I don't know anything about cars, and I'm intimidated. And I'm like, I don't know what that's even supposed to look like, but the one you're holding looks bad. I'll pay for it. Like mm-hmm. they'll bring out a... Oh, this thing. Whew. Look at the air filter. Now I'm like, I don't know. So and then like you'll me. tell your neighbor, who is like a man. Yeah. And he'll be like, no, dude, all you got to do is knock that air filter. It'll look clean. Yeah. You know, but you don't know that. Yeah. You're like, man, yeah, you're right. That so interesting terrible. turn of events this time. Uh, I go to the, the don't get out of your car oil change place, and the first person that I deal with... If you looked up the word butch <laughs> in the dictionary, this is what you would see. She had a, uh, like a buzz cut. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. She was built like a fire hydrant. <laughs> and she was the mechanic that I was going to deal with. And I'm like, okay, yeah, I got a likely very manly woman lesbian mechanic. So she starts working on it. And then I realize when I pop the hood, which I had trouble with. <laughs> oh, where, no. you, where is it? <laughs> so, <laughs> so then the woman that starts working on the at the hood, the original lady was a white lady. This lady was a black lady. She was also. Uh, I'm not as good at spotting other races of lesbians. She was definitely also. Okay, a lesbian. wait. So you're really good at spotting white. I just have more lesbians. I just have more experience but with when, it. When it's a non-white lesbian, yeah, but you're but just not sure. Trust me, I'm I'm pretty sure. Okay. So she's working on it. Uh-huh. And then I look over at the bay next to me, and a very similar situation is taking place to a guy in a, like a Lexus SUV, white, butch, <laughs> lesbian, and a <gasps> black lady who was, uh, I would say, of the same persuasion. And it occurred to me, there are no men at this uh, wow. auto shop. And then boss comes in, the manager, the head honcho. She's just like a different version of the mechanic wearing a white shirt instead of the gray one that they... So I was telling TC about this, and he was like, dude, if that's the lady in charge, this might be like the Aggies or the Mormons where they just hire from within, and she built this entire shop. There's no men. That's great. It is great, and I actually felt kind of cool about the fact that I knew she was the one ripping me off rather than some guy, you know, named James who could kick my ass. Yeah. Not to say she couldn't kick my ass. Ladies can do anything. They could even rip you off. Yeah. Yeah. And they're all laughing at me as I'm in my little car, like, ee, ee, texting, <laughs> got my little vape. I don't That's think, great. so you think they were s- ripping you off, though? They're all ripping you off. Yeah. I don't know. The I feel 100%. like a bunch of ladies would be honest. <laughs> what? <laughs> we're just more honest than y'all. That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. But we she are. definitely upsold me, and I was proud to do it. I was proud to get taken 
by a by woman. A lady that kind of looked like Bill Parcells. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Next time you bring your daughter there. <laughs> See, honey, you can ref the non-playoff NBA games and you can change oil. And you could be a mechanic. Yeah, it was embarrassing, but also very fun. Cool. I wonder how they all found each other. Oh, they know. Yeah. Yeah. Like they all that's a, that's a tight knew community. how to do the same thing and found each other and started this business. I guess so. It's kind of know, brilliant. Did I tell you when I was in college, I took women's studies? Yes, you have. <laughs> and in that class, they would have speakers sometimes come in. And one time a woman came in. You got to uh, set the, was, what year are we talking? 91. Okay. And they had a uh, lady come in. She was my age. She was our age, so she was a college student. And they had her speak to us because she was a lesbian. <laughs> that that like, was, that was like, her whole. <laughs> that was the, the defining feature. Yeah, if, it, if she was on TV, you know, underneath her face, it would have said lesbian. Yeah. Right there. <laughs> yeah. That's that the, was her title. The and wild then, thing that she she's brought She's just like, look, table. I'm not the only one on campus. You're like, There's, what? She's like, we. She described gaydar without saying gaydar. Maybe that hadn't become a term yet, but she just said, you know, I'll, but I'll, I'll notice others, and as we're walking by, you know, I'll lock eyes, and she'll, you know, give it a little knowing nod. I uh-huh. nod, and, like, we all, and I'm like, oh, wow. whoa, yeah. <laughs> it's like the Jeep wave. You yeah, know. the Harley. It's like the Jeep thing, but for lesbians. Right. I like it. For ladies who don't like wieners. Mm-hmm. Although maybe all ladies don't really like wieners, but they put up with it for the... I've seen documentaries to the contrary. Oh, okay. <laughs> documentaries, or are you watching something where they're being paid to like wieners? Julie. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Anyways, that's, that's my weekend uh-huh, that kind of happened on the weekend. You're time me when I mention it, <laughs> but y'all talk about it all the time. Is that your weekend check? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Uh, I didn't do much else. You didn't Kid go to stuff. A, a show? Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. I did go to a comedy show on Saturday night. Uh, Nick Bowen. And I saw him last year. Southern Miss quarterback. And I, No, not the 49er quarterback. Uh, and I was kind of worried that it was going to be the same set because I saw him late last year, and it was entirely new, and it was great. What's his name? Nick Mullen. He used okay. to host a podcast called Come Town. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. And I forced myself to go to the late show and – yeah. Boy, the late show. Yeah. I know. It was tough. What's the late? What time? 9.30, and it was over at 11. So I was home by close to midnight. Yeah? Not too bad. I was in downtown Fort Worth. But, yeah, the How guys much? I was with were like, let's go. Let's just go out. And I was like, dude, I am no chance. I'm barely awake right now. Getting old is hard. Yeah. It is. It was cool, though. How much did you laugh? Like, you, what percentage of the like jokes hang- did you laugh the at? The whole time. Really? 100%? Yeah. Pretty much. The opener, the it, the host was good. The feature was good. The, and Nick, he's like one of the funniest people in my world. Really? Yeah. I the, feel like 25 of his 50 minutes were on 9-11. Oh. <laughs> so you know that place. Yeah, you like that. <laughs> Isn't it weird to hang out with a bunch of guys who want to party, but you don't? Because <laughs> yeah. I run into that all the time these days. Like, you know, they want to go out and... Who are you hanging out with? Just Party even guys. when I go out or meet <laughs> Jake or whatever, it's, it's usually like, oh, these guys want to, you know, drink and everything after, and I don't. Or if we go to training camp, you guys are want to, you know, oh, let's, uh, let's go pound a few beers, and I'll be like, ah. Dan- then you're just there, and you're the guy not drinking, and then everybody else is kind of, you know, you can see as the drinking increases... Everybody becomes, to them, more fun. Mm-hmm. And to you, just more, I want to just get out of here. Yeah. So, do you ever want to party? <laughs> That's a serious question. I have uh, recently taken to, uh, in the stream world, when we, when we do the uh, cowboy games. Okay. Yeah, he had a couple White Claws. Uh, I, couple I think white I'm, claws, I'm eh? increasing things. <laughs> Don't. All right. Don't. I no, I, it's hard to, to start drinking, Jake. You, but and we've I'm, never I'm, done that. I'm trying it's interesting. To, yeah, that but, sounds like a real problem. I'm trying to ramp up and drink a little more each day. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he, good for you. He had Keep a, working on it. He had a great time <laughs> until, I did. The, until the next morning. Right. <laughs> like, we were on the stream, and I was like, man, I can't believe I, I haven't drank in a while. This is great. And yes, the next day I realized this is why I don't do that drinking. You had a two white claw hangover? <laughs> <laughs> <It's> unbelievable. <laughs> 
Julie's shaming you. I'm sorry. You. <laughs> Julie is shaming That's me. That's why you have to keep drinking. Because Julie drinks all the time. you got to out-drink her This now. is what alcoholics do. They just make fun yeah, of you so that you'll join them and get down to the gutter <laughs> like they are. I'm not an alcoholic. Hey, oh, hey, no, no. Of course you're not. No. I could drink. I quit any time. <laughs> I just like giving you crap because it is interesting. I've never really sat around and had a few with you. All right. Well, and let's I've do done it this that year. With most people I've worked with. Maybe we okay. should do it today. Why not? There's a bar. There is a bar here at Zoli's Pizza in Addison. That's right. Where they want to give you that hawk to us. <laughs> so, uh, my weekend. Of course, you remember that my wife was out of town, but then she came back to town. Mm. So that's a uh, yay boo. Now, this week, we do look forward to Wednesday. She works at a school, and school starts Wednesday. Oh, all and right. This morning. All right. Back to work. This morning, as I'm navigating my way around her in the kitchen, because I'm trying to get my, uh, my frozen blueberries out of the freezer to By put way, them in my oatmeal. Do you think Dan's chill about that, or as he's passing, is he like, oh, oh. <laughs> Again, I don't want to meet in the middle on things. I just want to do know. the thing I want to do. And now she's you my know, in God, my way. My God, look at that pizza. She's in and the I way. was very Standing excited. in her own home. I, I, I just remembered she'll be going to work on Wednesday because she told me last night. And I said, oh, that's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I can say things that I don't totally mean. Um. But anyway, so now she was back in town, so I had to carry her suitcase up the uh, stairs. What a man. And, you know, it was whatever. My point is, so I, you know I go to a trainer once a week, mm-hmm. and uh, so he'll put me through some exercises and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking when we used to exercise and work out, it was because I want to get better at baseball, and I'm going to do things to increase my forearm strength. I'm going to... Or if you're, you know, whatever your sport is, I'm going to try. I need my more burst, so I'm going to practice this or whatever. Um, now, last time I was at the trainer, he had me do something he called the suitcase carry. Mm-hmm. Have you ever done this? Yes. It's like one big giant weight, and you're walking along just carrying that up and down you know, yeah, maybe to a, whatever. Maybe a kettlebell. Yeah, and then you do it again with the left arm, and it's mm-hmm. like you're trying tr- – it keeps your, you know – Engaged. It keeps your right side, you know, if you're carrying it on the left, it's, it's, maybe it's for the obliques. I don't know. Yes. But anyway, this is what I train for now. <laughs> and I was, I was walking up the stairs with her heavy suitcase. I was thinking, I'm built for this now. Yeah. <laughs> I, I've been to the gym three times this week. I train just for this moment. Yes. Yeah. Because I was out of breath a little bit. Um, like, I would now get out of breath to where my Apple Watch will, like, do the thing. It looks like you're working out, and I'm washing dishes or something. Yeah. I'm like, wait. No. <laughs> yeah. Um. That's always <laughs> tough. Like, mine will ask you, like, what, what strain were you doing? And I was just like, uh, like, I was just holding a kid. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of sad. I don't see that on the list. Yeah. So instead of training to be better at sports these days, I now train to barely get by in everyday life. Like, anybody should be able to carry a suitcase up the stairs. It's functional yep. fitness. But... Now I can actually do it. So if you have any suitcases, uh, bring them on out here, and I'll you load up I'll the RV force. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Lo- load up the RV force. It's six fifty. You can be luggage man. <laughs> That's right. You can be I will, luggage man. <laughs> I will be able to load up the RV. <laughs> um, I got a complaint about my local bagel shop. Uh oh. <laughs> He's gonna go in, folks. <laughs> um, and I'll say it. It's the Einstein Bagels in, in oh. uh, it's either Grapevine or South Lake, right? We there. would welcome their business, however, <laughs> if they were that particular interested. location. Though this has happened to me enough times that I'm ready to say it. I'll go there because the Colleyville location. Well, here's my thing. We got there at ten minutes till noon. Me and my daughter will go get a bagel on the weekend. I like the Nova Lox. Okay. The salmon. Yeah, you and your salmon. <laughs> and um, 10 minutes till noon, they close at 2. They're out of plain bagels. Wow. And I said, are you, uh, you got any more in the oven? Okay, wait a little. The baker left at 11. Oh, no. I'm like, oh, okay. And I wanted to say, well, that's not a YP. And then I thought, Yes, it, yes is. it is. Yeah, it's very or, much a YP. Not, a, not an MP. Yeah. It's a YP, but no, it is an MP because now I'm. they're just telling. 
And now I'm just talking to the... She doesn't have anything to do with it. Yeah. She's in high school. Yeah. But now I'm starting to feel like I want to do... I want to... My inner Karen is uh, (laughs) starting to emerge. Yeah. And my daughter gave me the... Just get the... Get get the poppy seed. Get the whatever. And I'm like... Yeah. But... Uh, I would think noon might be when he could be done. And then they have enough to take you into like the one o'clock hour. But yeah, I mean... That's how it is. That's how it is at, like, meat places. What do you mean? Yeah, I mean, like, when barbecue they, places. Like, most places, when they run out, it's done. Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah they, but I mean, they make like, it overnight, you know? They're, really they're smoking a brisket. And really fancy, like, famous ones that can do that. They're pretty much They get all really of them. popular, and they know people will come form a line, and then when they're done, they're done. But, but I like, didn't realize that. the yeah, bagel yeah. place, who's but you gotta supposed make, to be you there for bake bagels. Bake the bagel, though. Do what? You got to bake the bagel, though. That takes time. Maybe the baker had a family emergency, you Ooh. asshole. Okay, well, yeah. no, I've, that location I've been to many times where I'm this has happened. I'm a psychologist over here. The Colleyville one, you could walk in at two minutes until two. Yeah. And they've always got a plain bagel. For well, you. yeah, it's like you have one job. Serve bagels. Struggle. Have yeah. bagels. What a struggle. Give people bagels. Yeah, you can't go to McDonald's and they don't I'm have a Big you. Mac. Right. <laughs> you can try and ride that out for three hours with no plain bagels. I'm on Team Dan on this one. You can't tune into but, bits and hey, tits and then I'm not see any <laughs> I'm a Karen. juggage. Right. Um, and well, then I bet two, you are, uh, I bet you are a Karen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really not. Every once in a while, though. My I'll wife's kind of a Karen, you. and I like it. You need a Karen. Certain like, sometimes things. you need to have your Karen with you. I don't want to be the Karen. No. I want someone else, though, to start yelling for me. Yeah. Yeah. It's good to have that friend. I don't um, know. I'm usually very kind and understanding and appreciative but if it's something that i feel like i can really get behind i'll go full karen like something that i feel like they're really wrong and i'm really right i'm not afraid (laughs) two things i've noticed this weekend that one you have talked about before but now i'm really noticing it the one that you've not talked about is have you guys seen the return of the baby on board sign yeah do you know what the baby on board (laughs) sign is yeah, it means you're not supposed to crash your car into them because they have a kid. Yeah, yeah, but that was a big thing when I was growing up, the baby on board. Yeah, I believe Homer Simpson's uh, barbershop yeah. quartet once. Yeah. Baby so it's on back, board. you're saying? Yeah, I saw like two of them. How really? I adore. And yeah, I just I thought that's – it's just a little blast from the past. Everything is cyclical, right? It's so, we'll funny. It's so funny, too, because it's like – is the point like, oh, I was actually going to wreck into your car and make you call the Frankels, <laughs> uh, but there's a baby on the in the car, so I'm going to take it easy here. Yeah, well, I'm not going to carjack that car. Yeah, right, because I don't want the extra cargo. Yeah, that makes sense. It, but it's kind of like the people that put the, like, drive like your kid lives here yeah. sign out there. And it's like, well, you know, I was thinking about going really fast, but, yeah, my kid lived there. It always made me laugh if, uh, I've said this before, but if like Casey Anthony saw one of those signs. <laughs> Is that oh, the dear. lady who drowned her kids? <laughs> oh, dear. So, uh, and she just like hits the gas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wanted them gone. <laughs> Dan, so, did, did you drive differently when your kids were in the car? I do. But yeah. I drive like a, you did? a baby anyways. I mean, once they started getting old enough to notice, I didn't because like I'm worried about their safety. Yeah. But once they would know that I'm... Driving hey, like, you shouldn't drive like a maniac, or you shouldn't, yeah. Yeah, the first few months, I drove a little slower with Brooks in the car, but now I don't, and whenever I'm hauling ass, I'll look back and see him like, I probably shouldn't be doing this. A little reminder. Yeah. As but yeah. It, do- it doesn't he's stop. He's holding on yeah. for dear life. <laughs> he's, yeah, he's, it is weird, though, when they start correcting you, and they know more about driving he, and directions than you do. He knows when I blow through a yellow light now. He does? Oh, yeah. What are you doing? I don't want to stop. It's a yellow light. It's a yellow light with a child's life on the line. Oh, oh my yeah. gosh. What He's got to get here guy? to help set up. <laughs> I'm on board with it. The one thing that you have mentioned before, though, that I don't think is going to help if indeed we still have an obes- a child obesity epidemic. Mm-hmm. Do we? I think we have a general obesity epidemic. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the electric bike. Dude. Like it's not a moped, it's not a motor. It, like it's a, it's just a bike. It looks like a mountain bike. Yeah, but you don't pedal. But they're it. not pedaling. Yeah, nope. They're and very popular kids. in your now, neighborhood. Now, like twelve-year-olds in our neighborhood are driving around on them. That like thirty miles an hour. Like wait, what? What's going on here? Yeah, they bypass the whole learning to ride a bike thing. 
and they, they bypass yeah. the exercise. They just kind of have to know how to balance it, but yep. yeah, you're not even getting an exercise. I'm dealing with it right now with my nine-year-old because... He wants one? He doesn't want to learn how to ride a bike because he's seen that there's an easier way on the electric scooter or <laughs> the electric so sc- bike. We're so screwed. Yeah. <laughs> we're so are. hot. I don't want to go out there, Mom. Yeah, and I don't know. Those kids are intimidating to me back in your neighborhood. There's not a lot of kids where I normally live, but back by you, there's a lot of kids. Yeah, and they're and, all worth more than you. Oh, I, well, they're, they scare the hell out of me, too. Like, they look cool. They all have the same haircut. Uh, there's like a gang of like 13 year olds back there with electric bikes yep. and they have cool clothes, shiny, shiny neon clothes. They're zooming around. They're not wearing helmets, which bothers me. <laughs> a lot of times they have the helmet on the like tied to the handles because yeah. their mom made them leave with it. But then they're like, whatever, mom. Do you ever stop and say anything to them? Put no, on your helmet. I get out kid. of the way. I just don't want any smoke with a 13 year old affluent child on an e-bike. Oh, gosh. No, no. No, sir. No, sir. Weekend check. So I've, uh, I'm have i developing a theme here because I've let you guys in that I'll read a rom-com book on you. Uh, I've put Brooks in gymnastics. <laughs> you went to the... I went to a Lindsey Sterling concert by myself. Yep. Do you know Which who that I, is? Yes, and I heard this, and I fully support you. Thank you. I, I knew who I she was. I don't think I needed oh, that. Oh, no way. You support him? I, <laughs> I do. I probably... Wish you would have said it. Didn't I support know who that Blake was. in this, and she's hot, right? She, yeah. We don't do that. Like you didn't. What is wrong with you? What are you misogynistic? <laughs> what, what happened to him? No, Dan's right. You're being misogynistic. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's wrong, Julie. We don't okay. object, objectify He's already frowned women. upon me for mentioning porn, saying that a girl is hot, and going through a yellow light <laughs> <laughs> since we started this show. Just try to take it easy. <laughs> take it easy. And Dan's calling you an alcoholic. Yeah. Sorry, Blake. So. What'd you do now? <laughs> Strap on. <laughs> I took Brooks to a play. What play? Big Fish. Oh, okay, yeah, the one that Beth was talking about. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, she invited us to it, and uh, when I looked it up, it's it's the Wiley, a- uh, Wiley Acting Group, so, like, right next door to me, and it said Wiley Acting Group for Children, so I thought maybe this is, like, a kid's thing. Because it says children. Mm -hmm. But they meant like teenagers. Oh, okay. So I walk in. I was expecting like, I don't know, is there a playground or is there a huge screen to look at? And no, it was just like a dark theater. That's usually what a play is. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, So now I've got a tired two-year-old who now I have to keep quiet for two hours. Yeah. It's a bad situation. I would have pulled the chute. The second I walked in there, I know, like, but look, I, we're going to figure something else but out. I bought the tickets, huh. and I'd been telling Brooks, hey, we're going to go see this movie. I think you're going to like it. Uh, so we kind of stuck it out. Stuck it out through the first intermission. He bailed then? Yeah, because he was, he was starting to walk. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, all the actors, actresses were, were kids at Wiley High School. It was incredible. Really, really cool. I've never seen. Why is it incredible? It's theater. It's a common thing. Well, I know, but I don't know. It's because they they put a thing on it where it's like, hey, this is just children. But it's actually like really, really well done. Really, really good. Yeah, it's theater. Kids are talented these days. Yeah, uh, kids are talented. They can't ride Uh, bikes, but they can act. The the first half of Big Fish is really good. Okay. I'm pretty excited to see the second half. I feel like they made it into a movie. (laughs) They did. Yeah. Yeah, that's tri- what I was like thinking. It's like real trippy. Yeah. Is it? I thought. I don't know. I've never seen it. But yeah, I need to watch it. So yeah, I took Brooks to a play. Um, my sister has been out of town all weekend, and I wanted to drive her electric vehicle, so I drove a Tesla around all weekend. Cybertruck? No. <laughs> nice. Just a normal Tesla. How I'm was really, it? I'm it- really interested in the EVs. I'm thinking about getting one, but I kind of hated- Tesla guy. I kind of hated the way that I felt people were looking at me in a Tesla. We should get one, put our logo on it, and it'll be the DZ EV. (laughs) Good God, this guy's on fire. (laughs) No? This guy has been in the marketing lab all weekend. (laughs) Just on fire. But just driving around town, parking, the doors open like this and not like this. Yeah. And I don't know. It felt weird. I've seen Teslas that actually have like an anti-Elon sticker on the back. Like, no, dude, I'm cool. Care about the environment. I'm cool. It's just, it has nothing to do with him. Jeez. Because there are some people that are like in the cult. 
you know, they buy it because of him. Right. I will never not laugh when I see one of those cyber trucks, though. I saw one oh, on the way here today, and I'm just like, what are you doing? Someone t- took a picture of one in a jack-in-the-box drive through <laughs> That is America right there. <laughs> that is America. I told you they got one painted like a Browns helmet in Cleveland, I saw. A cyber truck? Yeah. Okay. We need so to find it. We're going to find that. Yeah, what would it take, Blake, for us to give you a dumb zone car wrap? <laughs> Maybe like a QR code on it or something. (laughs) Yeah. All of our faces. We should look into this. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Uh, Halo tournament this weekend, the third major of the season. Optic came in second again. The fourth tournament in a row, Optic Gaming is coming second place. Losing a step? You know, they're, no. I mean, they're consistent, playing really well. Uh, Lucid hit the craziest overkill I've ever seen. I don't want to hear it. On live fire. I just don't want to hear it. Killed one elbow, then uh, got a one-shot guy in dummies, came back bottom tower, are you bringing got your him, ni- are you bringing and your then ni- hit your a Nintendo, no-scope at top tower. Are you bringing your Nintendo on the RV? I'm bringing my Xbox and playing NCAA. Where? Yes. I, I don't know. Do I need to bring a screen or a monitor? No, wait, there's a TV there's on There's a there. TV on the RV. Yeah. It's you- the DZ TV. <laughs> the DZ RV TV. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Now, that one didn't hit. Uh, so, are you going to hook it up? At the Airbnb? Yes. I'm I, with you. I have a week and a half away from we're my gonna, wife and we're kid. Not bond? Doing what? You I just said know. you don't drink. Yeah, but I mean, I don't know. Let's just do, hang out. Let's go surf. Let's go to the beach. Y'all are going to have to set some screen time limits on Blake. We <laughs> <laughs> have to set a timer like with my daughter. Yes. You got three minutes when no, the timer no, no, goes off. It's the third quarter. Off, it's the third quarter. Come on. Ra- wrap up your game, bud. Come on. It's two minute warning. This is family vacation. Game. This is not what we're here for, Blake. And then the, <laughs> the last thing for you, uh, I made something for our sh- social medias that I wanted to play on the show okay. because I was really, really proud of it. And uh, thanks to Dan, I now understand the reference. Oh. Uh, do you remember in Office Space when they destroyed the uh, printer? Yes, everyone was, does. Well, I, I didn't until like four months ago because mm-hmm. I'd never seen it. Uh, Office Space, a really good movie, by the way. Well, it's got the, the Blake sign of a, a seal of approval. <laughs> and so a dz recommended that we should set the uh, us destroying a microwave to the uh, to the theme. <laughs> uh, like, just recreate the scene. And for those that haven't seen it, let's watch just a little bit of the printer scene from Office Space. And so they had the printer kept jamming, and they just hated it. PC load letter. Yes. And so then they PC just... PC load letter? What's PC load letter mean? <laughs> and so then it's just like two minutes of it beating the crap out of this printer. Everyone's wanted to do it. Well, y'all kind of just did this with the microwave, right? Yeah, and so someone recommended we do that. So then uh, we did. All right, so let's play the other one. Play the microwave one. <laughs> okay, when I saw this, I didn't realize it was the exact same music. Yeah, it's yeah. good it was. Because Jake took, by the way. This is so painful to watch for so many reasons. Jake is chainsawing our microwave, which was on fire at the same time. (laughs) So stupid. I had uh, weights that I was throwing at it. (laughs) Until I made it slow-mo, just like Office Space. That's pretty badass. (laughs) I was just super proud of this video. Yeah, you should be. And Jake (laughs) broke broke our chainsaw, which I had to... uh, you didn't tell her, did you? Well, I I didn't think she'd actually want to use it this weekend. And she's like, what did you... Why? She go, comes up to me and she goes, why did you break our chainsaw? <laughs> Ouch. I go, the, the word should be how. <laughs> like, not like what. Like, I didn't say I am out to break the chainsaw. Yeah. Jake, and Jake did it. At least you had a really good reason. Then that's what I said. I said Jake did it. Oh, you do everything Jake does. <laughs> and then, remember the guy that left you a present in our toilet didn't double flush? That did not happen. It was that guy. That guy did it. <laughs> that did not happen. That is yes, that did up. once happen. Got some great feedback from some listeners about EVs. Thank you very much if you reached out. But a quick follow-up. I did watch the full movie version of Big Fish and thought it was enjoyable. Now, I did battle between just being in the moment and enjoying the movie and uh, putting my thinking cap on and dissecting it, but I came away with one kind of big thought. 
The theme of the movie is don't let details get in the way of a good story. Uh, I guess the theme is largely what you decide to make of it. But I couldn't help think that Jerry Jones is Edward Bloom, the main character. Things happen to Jerry and he's going to fantasize it into a story that fits him or his narrative. Recently, I can remember he wanted to re-sign Randy Gregory. Then somehow that got fumbled along the way. And then he tells us that, hey, two, signing two players are better than one. They get stomped in the playoffs the last two years, but we're right at the top of the league in regular season wins and revenue. Jerry is happy running his team and controlling the story of his own fairy tale. If you spend time chasing facts or caring about this football team, you're wasting your time. You can either take the story at face value and enjoy it and the source, or you should probably just choose another team to root for. I don't know why that was my first thought as the movie ended, but just watching this old man take probably normal stories and try to make them into a grandeur, uh, it just it just really reminded me of Jerry for some reason. Happy to hear what you think about the movie uh, or my little crackpot theory. Blake at NoPuppetProductions.com. There's my Big Fish review. And here's Dak Prescott saying he's pretty much sick of Edward Bloom too. This from our Monday episode as well. It of course starts out with him being like, Sam, it's very nice to see you. <laughs> and of course, Mike's here too. Like he can't just not be horny for, for five minutes. Like he I used to do it. it to Jane. I, I, like when Jane and Elf had a show, he'd always be like, oh, Jane, it's good to see you, and I guess you brought Elf with you. Right. This old man, creepy all the time. But at, I thought this was a really good question uh, by Ducey at the end, and this is how the interview ended. I think it's something we all think about. Let me wrap with this. It occurs to me that you're almost the exact same age as President Biden. I think you're a month older. He's made a decision about his future to step away. Does it ever cross your mind at all to say, you know what, I don't have to deal with a lot of this stuff. I've got more money than I could ever spend. I just want to enjoy life in a different way. Not in the least. Not in the least. Uh, I'd be sitting someplace if I didn't get to be sitting here with the two of you. I'd be sitting someplace away from this camp. I'd be so sick. I'd be so wistful. I'd be so much wanting to be in the game, and I'd be so much wanting these problems I'm dealing with, and have you raking me over the coals? I'd want that so bad. You know that other stuff, that just sitting on your butt, that gets old quick. Gets old real quick. Matter of fact, when you get shot at a lot and you have to work a lot, when you do get a chance to sit on your butt, it feels better. It really is a respite from that time. But to do it all the time, no thank you. No, not at all. And I'll be very candid with you. I'm Ooh. more excited, I'm more fired up than I can ever remember being when I first bought the Cowboys. And I want to go and I want to be a part of a winner. He's, he's never going anywhere. No. He'll die in his office at the start. Yeah. We knew this though, right? Yeah, it's just funny to frame it in the Biden way. Like when, for, for, yeah, for, for sure. Juicy to just bring up, I mean, hey, you know, this guy just decided, you know, we kind of saw that he's not really all there anymore. And Jerry certainly seems much more with it than Biden did. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's an interesting way to frame it. Doesn't want to sit on his butt. But, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I think – I'm sure we all think about it a lot. Like, if you could just retire. Like, if you had the means to live very well and just retire, like, what would you do? Because I can tell you what my dad does. Never stops doing shit. Yeah. Constantly. Every time I call him, he's got some fire he's putting out, or he's, you know, he's, he just never relaxes because he just, he did it for 38 years, and now he's just like, I don't know, what am I supposed to do? You come up with projects. All the time. And maybe if he owned a UPS, he'd still be day-to-day, you know? Maybe yeah. it's a different thing if you're just... Maybe. You're doing your own thing or working for the man, and you're just trying to get out from under the impre- oppressive thumb of the man. But anyways, that was a, I thought that was an interesting way to frame that question. Yeah, so I have a, a few DAC cuts for you here. Um, I just put another one in there, too, uh, okay. that, uh, that's labeled three. But you can uh, – so this is from last week. We weren't on. Um, so, of course, he's going to be asked about the contract and blah, 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 blah. But I also want you to pick up on a new DAC uh, crutch phrase and buzzword, which you'll hear pretty quickly – do you uh, want the one you just put in? No, zero first. Okay. Yeah. I'm just here so I don't get fined. <laughs> uh, uh, gosh. Uh, Honestly, I don't. Um, I'm focused on now. He was asking um, me anything to say about his contract. 
that's always been my message. I think I've always told y'all that. Uh, I'm about being present where my feet are. Um, and honestly, that was, that was kind of the team message. And that, that, that's what's great is um, from, from Chad Boland to Mike McCarthy to everybody, that's kind of just been our message. And so that's right aligned with, with my views, uh, what I want to do. Okay. Where my feet are, is that what his yeah, He says phrase? that a lot. Yeah. A lot of people say that. <laughs> I know. It's like a therapy term for being present and being in the moment, but Be where he's, your feet are. He's, clearly, um, he's clearly worked this into his daily lexicon, so they're cut one, Dan. Focusing on those little things, that, yeah, you can embrace your time, you can embrace where your feet are, and, and before you know <laughs> oh, it, no. you're just Jeez, man. day after day getting better. Now, this is a like question. How, how could he embrace that? He's making $40 million. He's about to be the highest paid quarterback in the NFL. Like, that's really weird that you would embrace this. It's, uh, <laughs> right. What a limb you've gone out on. Sorry, you were about to well, he, promote yeah, this question. Yeah, it's, this is, he's getting close to the fire here. You say to the fans that are still disappointed about how last season ended. You guys. One more time. What do you say to the fans who are still disappointed in your team after what happened to you in full season last year? Be fans or don't be fans. Um, if you're a fan, you're going you're gonna to turn the page just as we do. Um, you're going to move forward, understanding that you've got better ahead of you. I just talked about being present and being in the now, and that's in your beliefs. That's whoever you're believing in. That's how you see your family, your friends your favorite team um so so that 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 goes to life is to move on um yeah sorry obviously uh but nobody it hurt it hurt us more than it did them and and uh obviously it's it's on us to get back and to do better but uh yeah move on wow not a good answer <laughs> not a great answer at all I mean, not what fans want to hear he's right but anytime you get into the it's worse for us than it is for you and the move on. I mean, he's right. If you're a fan, be a fan. That's part of the deal. It's fanatic, but that's a bad answer. No, you have to say, you know, they they have every right to be. Um, we well, haven't lived up to your expectations. There are expectations too. Um, I, I will not rest until we do. Just We're say doing, it. Yeah, yeah, you're. Yeah. And for Dak, who usually says the right thing, he's a very boring yeah. guy. Yeah. Um, He's not funny, despite the fact that everybody laughed at what he first said. Yeah. There. He, you know, he, it's, it's odd that he didn't say that. I mean, when I Romo said, you know, worst thing if this is the happened. worst thing, he's right. But you can't say that. Yeah. I mean, obviously you can. You have to play the game if you're the yeah, quarterback you, of the you Cowboys. You just want your – yeah, you want – they're all in the game, and, and everybody wants to believe that you care more than – you know, I don't know. Well, here's the thing. And you could skip to the third cut for this one that I put in there. What I'm telling you is Dak is super over all this. Yeah, it like we're like getting it. to a point with him now where he's just like, I don't I don't owe anybody being like this answer, that answer. He's tired of it. And that's why the question of if he does go to market, does he even want to come back here, I think is a real one. I think there's a ninety percent chance that he's here. Maybe they get something done during camp, maybe they get something done right after the offseason next season. But he at least talks about not being here in this one. Jack, we talked a lot about the, the business aspect of things. And I'm curious, even when you say your feet are here where they are, if you've thought about what this league means and whether or not you're here as a cowboy next year, you will be well taken care of with the way the business works in For the sure. NFL. For sure. And if that is the case, and if you've thought about it, have you found any freedom, any liberation in that trying to find the best you can be? Yeah, I'm free. Yeah. Uh, to your point, that, that is the freedom in it, and that's why you have to focus where your feet are. And as I said, it's a two-way street that um, they have wants, I have wants. Um, I think I've deserved that. I'm um, understanding um, that this is a business, and obviously I want to be here. Um, talking about growing up, uh, this, is, this is where I've become a man. So, um, but at the, end of the day, at the end of the day, it's a business. And um, you know when... Uh, I'm going to say, uh, I want to be here, but you know, when you look up, all the great quarterbacks I watched played for other teams. So my point in saying that is that that's not something to fear. That may be a reality for me one day, may not be my decision. So that's the, the freedom that I have is uh, be where your feet are, make the most of it. Uh, oh be confident gosh. in yourself, make your team better. Told you. 
Um, I love my teammates. I love that locker room. I love everything about being out here in Oxnard and, and being a Dallas Cowboy. So that's what allows me to be free and focused and understand that and time comes, who knows what comes. As I said, I've been through a lot of adversity personally that it's about, you know, being thankful for where you are, hugging and loving on your loved ones and taking it one day at a time and um, handling the rest when, when it approaches. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's some uh, in the media negotiating for you. For sure. I mean, yeah. Look at all the greats. Look at Joe Montana. Look at Tom Brady. Look at Peyton Manning. Look at Brett Favre. Doesn't always end like a fairy tale. Now, it does with the Cowboys if you're Don Meredith or Roger oh, Staubach Romo. or Romo. But, yeah, I thought that was, you know, you see what I'm saying now? Like, he's kind of tired of it. And he's oh, just yeah. like, look, I'm going to be fine. Y'all can figure this out. If you, can't, if you want to go draft a quarterback, go. I'll go get $65 million a year in, uh, I don't know, fill in the blank. Yeah. He doesn't have time for it anymore. By the way, have you guys seen the projected – Brock Purdy contract? No. Alre- already? Well, like... If indeed... Yeah. I think the, the speculation... 70? Yeah. Really? It's at, it's at 70. Yeah, 70 is <laughs> Sports is so great. I mean, Jordan Love just got like 60, right? But it's... I think we've talked about this before. Like when... I think it was Nolan Ryan who broke the 1 million barrier... And like by two years later, someone broke the three million. Like it's yeah. you don't go up one million now. It's one point one two million. It's well now I got to get two. Yeah. And it's like okay fifty, we're going sixty. Yeah, I mean it's just increasing by the same percentage. It's just that the numbers are so big that the same increase means fifty two to sixty, and then sixty to sixty eight. So yeah, it's wow. It's very interesting to see the evolution of Dak. You knew it was going to happen. Romo eventually was not like the guy who would come to Summer Bash and was like, hey, this is just fun. I'm the Cowboys quarterback. Eventually he was just like, F y'all. I mean. Stop. Stop making my life suck. It's kind of like anybody in their career, right? <laughs> like, yeah. like you start and you're just happy to be there and you take the money and you do your work and then you start getting fed up with this or that or this or that and you start being honest and then usually you leave that place. <laughs> well, I don't have any idea what you're talking about there at all. But well, my, he's no right. different than all of us. That's true. He just has like a football field in his backyard. Yeah, and he's getting paid a whole lot of money to go out there and do his job. And, and you know, Jerry wants him to say all the right things, and now he's not doing it. So I would get a football interesting. field in my backyard if I had the means. And like a jugs machine. Yeah. That'd be tight. You go football field? Over basketball? Yeah. I would. That'd Wouldn't be it be awesome. cool to have a little mini uh, baseball field, Blake? And then, like the Dr. Pepper ballpark days? Yeah. That was. And you put a jugs machine on the mound and you just go up, you just take batting practice, yeah. hitting, hitting into the cornfield. <laughs> sure. Whatever. <laughs> you know, now we've made it feel a dream. A little mini baseball. I have one DAC thing, only, and this is only, we expected to hear this from Zeke. I haven't really heard from Zeke yet, but DAC was on the NFL network. Uh, just to now be out here in year nine and to feel the best I've ever felt uh, is a blessing and nothing that, that I take lightly. So just trying to capitalize each and every day on that and continue to get better. Uh, yeah, I get into camp and I feel I'm, I'm, I feel lighter, I feel faster. Oh. Um, and, yeah, I'm throwing the ball better than I ever have. And then obviously oh. mentally, that's a big part in saying I feel the best I ever have is just oh. smart, sharp, um, ready to attack defenses. Oh. The old I'm in the best shape of my life. Yeah, throwing the ball better, lighter, quicker. Micah might even have said that too, which not we're we're not thinking Micah's in bad shape, but he wasn't at like the off season. Yeah, he skipped everything. That's why he had to say that though. The OTAs, yeah. Kind of weird. A lot of drama. It's like an insecure person thing to say to me a little bit. Like you don't need to say that. Just show us. Just well, show us that you're throwing the ball better than you ever had in your life. Don't it, tell me that. That's also why they post so much on Instagram their workouts. Yeah. Like I. It befuddles me. You know who should, who should post on Instagram their workouts? Somebody who was, like, really fat and lost, like, 100 pounds and committed to health and exercise. Like they're proud that's of really, what they did. Yeah. Not think, LeBron. Yeah, this, like, Tyreek Hill, I watch you score touchdowns. That's super impressive. I don't need to see that you Haven't pulled you a Haven't you done sled. enough <laughs> to weird. prove yourself? It's weird to me. Before we slide into more sports, want to take you to Tuesday's Open. 
where Dan introduces a new bit. He's unearthed some complaint letters from early in his career before his ticket days. So we're looking at about the mid 90s, early 90s, mid 90s in Ohio. Let's hear what people were complaining about Dan back in the day. This is from our 730 episode with sit in Eric D. But I want to start off with new bit. I have no name for it. It is a new bit. Does it need this? I guess we'll see. I need to differentiate. Mm-hmm. So, how did I find this? What's the origin of it? I was, I don't know, I was just cleaning up, trying to organize. And, um, oh, I think I was looking for some uh, plastic covers for my sheets, for my, uh, now that we have spots, I like to put my copy in hard copy form and cover it with the plastic thing because we're going to be on the road and when your internet stops working and you're like, oh, I can't find my uh, Franco and Franco copy, guess who will have it? The old man who prints things. I almost want to ask Rob if we can bring a printer. I swear to God, dude. I would love to be printing right on that uh, right no. on that RV. Space limited. You're not bringing your office jet. Then it would be the uh, HP RV. The HP, the DV, DZ. Anyway. Blake? So I found a... I can't. What can't you do? You can't deal with this high of a level of broadcast. I'll, yeah, I'll knock I, it down a You know, couple. I just can't keep up. I'll, I'll knock it down a couple of levels of broadcast. We're playing on Heisman. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So I found a uh, an old manila folder. This is quite old, in fact. And there's stuff in there. It's like when I worked in Cleveland at WHK. Look, here's the uh, the list of people uh, that we worked with. Um, like the their phone numbers and stuff. But then I found all these. Um, <laughs> I found different notes and letters that were sent to my radio stations, various ones, uh, complaining about me. I love it. Or the show I'm on. Yeah. What year? Which, a variety. This is uh, okay. in the 90s. Jeez, Everything okay. here is from the 90s. I guess I should have guessed with letters. Yes. Well, it's pre-ticket, you know, so yeah. anything pre-ticket is 90s. Right. Got here in 1999. In fact, we'll read this one in the future. I just wanted to read one today, and maybe in the, we can come up with a name for this or whatever. But So did I, you, you you photocopied these? That's a very old man term. Look, I, mean, I have one from SeaWorld. They whoa. were upset with us. SeaWorld. How would SeaWorld be upset with me? So, <laughs> we'll get to that in the future. I cannot wait for this. I'll just read Why you, you one. But, can I ask you one thing real quick? Because yeah. you and I are very different about this. Okay. Like, I read a book and I trade it in. Uh-huh. I don't have a single artifact for my career. I have a couple hard drives, but, you know, I don't have... The, I There's nothing in my house. When I get kicked out, there'll be nothing on the lawn. There's nothing to move. I don't have anything. I just don't keep anything. Moving forward, bro. Like a shark. Yes, you, you know? don't look behind. But when you think about these things and you think, I'm going to save this letter from SeaWorld, what are your – it's just like, this is interesting, this is funny. Like, do you, do I don't know, but if I didn't, it, I would have forgot about it. Yeah, and I it, forgot that SeaWorld complained about and me. And we wouldn't have – Why would SeaWorld complain about me? Look, it's given us me. a bit, which is good. Yeah. But I just – it's just weird to me. You're, I just save stuff that I like think a, could be of use in the future. You're a mini hoarder. It's It's got SeaWorld letterhead. It does. Why, why would you not save it? Yeah. He's an organized hoarder. He's an organized hoarder. That's a good way to put well, it. I'd love to be more organized. That's, That's my... the thing. They all do. You're chasing <laughs> that dra- You're chasing that uh that dragon. I really am, man. Okay. Anyway, so this one is to the superintendent of the uh Warren City Schools. So for a time, I worked in uh Cleveland and then a couple of the sales guys there, when our station, I worked for a sports station, I was kind of board op slash weekend host type guy. Um, a couple of the sales guys went and bought a small radio station in Warren, Ohio, which is kind of the Fort Worth to Youngstown, Ohio. So they call it the uh, Youngstown Warren area, uh, you know, Dallas Fort Worth area. So it's the it's kind of a big city, but it's not. I mean, big as far as as big as Youngstown, but not quite. So. Warren, Ohio, the uh, and very, like we thought, um, plywood, like opening a plywood store would be great 
to help barricade windows. It was just it was downtrodden. It was like it used to have like a GM plant there, which sure. closed down ten years before. Like we had a guy. The janitor for our station was a guy who used to work on the uh, assembly line and had a great pension and a great salary, but now he's the janitor for the radio station because, like, just it's a desolate area, a sure. very bad area. Um, and, yes, so then I, I worked there at a radio station called WRRO, and somebody sent a, a letter to the superintendent of the Warren City Schools that says, Dear Superintendent... <laughs> Okay. Okay. And I guess we could even put this out. This is August 27th, 1997. I would like to request you to tune in to radio station WRRO 1440 AM between the hours of 6 AM and 10 AM. After listening to the... I'm going to not read all the typos. It's okay, listening, but, but I'm from here on out, I'm, just know that nothing's spelled right in here. Yeah. But I'll just uh, figure out what they were trying to say. After listening to these, quote, garbage mouths. <laughs> what an insult. Think if you should announce your school closings or other emergencies on this station. I think your answer would be no, exclamation point. <laughs> Any station that will devote. So I did the morning show. <laughs> I think we're about to learn what you did on that morning show. <laughs> I don't even remember. Any station that will devote 30 to 45 minutes to the subject of, quote, masturbation. I, that's what I meant. I think we're about the, to learn what the you... the morning? And have one of their announcers say that during his first quarter in college, he did it four or five times a day. <laughs> is not fit for ma family listening. I don't think they're on. Another one of their topics was about, quote, condoms. Uh-huh. Yeah. Would you believe they discuss sex in any style you could? <laughs> they discussed the new, quote, flavored condoms, such as, quote, Nicodick. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably more like Nicodick. <laughs> Mr. McDowell and Mr. Wilson, so Big Jim, Big was, Jim, Wilson. Big Jim. was there with me. Mr. McDowell and Mr. Wilson complained they cannot say the F word or even the letter F, but they can refer to Florida University and call it FU. So she's upset about that. Classic Some things Dan. never change. Classic <laughs> man. Go to. Uh, then she has trouble with some of the rejoins. We had people saying stuff and uh, that there's bleeps in them and... and Blah, 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 and something about playing with yourself. Anyway, I am in the process of recording this program and contacting the FCC and see what their feelings are about this type of broadcasting. It is my opinion their license should be revoked for life. Mm. life. And then CC, all Trumbull County School Systems, Warren City Schools. I so love it. this was uh, mailed in the mail. So was there issue that you talked about too many sex positions? Had you just focused on missionary, you would have been okay? Perhaps. And similarly, like what if he said, I only did it one to two times a day? Right. And would that have been okay? Yes. Had perhaps five, found that's... that within the Overton window of like taste. Had it been an unflavored condom? Four or five. This guy's a fine. radical. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's uh... amazing. I love it. <laughs> I eagerly await SeaWorld's complaints. Right. <laughs> Wow, this is August 6th, 1997. What Boy, a year. They were coming in quick, huh? What, what a, a month. Year. How about that? What a month. All right. Man, that's awesome. That is so good. If you missed that episode, could be that you are not a subscriber. Tuesdays and Fridays are our paid episodes only for Patreon subscribers. It's an easy six ninety a month for five extra hours of content a week. And don't forget, we offer a seven-day free trial, which would be really useful for Cowboys fans next week while we're at camp. Got a friend who isn't a subscriber? Next week could be a great time for them to use that free trial and uh, try to get them hooked. Let's get to another Patreon-only episode and go to Friday, August 2nd, as we were joined by author and Dallas Morning News columnist Sarah Heppola, who helps us sort out this female-not-female -female boxing situation. We need to do this real quick, because Sarah will be interested in this story, I believe. Are you following the Olympics? A little bit, a little bit. Okay. okay. What's uh, standing out to you? Okay. Well, the boxing thing. That's the story of the day here. That was 
big yesterday. Yeah. yeah we talked about it yesterday the cultural story of the morning, day. but then throughout the day, it really, you know, once it fed the Fox News machine for an entire day, and I'm sure today, too, it's all they're talking about. Yeah. And okay, I have complicated feelings about this, guys. Yeah, it's a complicated story. Well, first of all, the person, the the boxer, the people who are calling a trans woman is actually intersex. So you, you, you know that, right? Well, okay, so the Washington Post has a really long article about this this morning, kind of getting into how we ended up here. And there is not a confirmed, there's not confirmed evidence of a test that proves that she has an XY chromosome, that she has XY chromosomes. Now, the head of the IBA, the International Boxing Association, which is a Russian guy um, who is, if you think boxing is shady, why don't you have their main federation run by a Russian? Because you're talking about the two most bribery, corrupt-fueled things you could imagine. He says that it was proven that she has XY chromosomes and that it was not just testosterone testing. There is no proof of that really anywhere. He says it was not testosterone testing. It was a different test that we had done. So it's possible that that's just a lie. Mm -hmm. It's also possible that she does have XY chromosomes, and that's actually not that uncommon for dominant athletes. There was a study done, I mm -hmm. think, in 2000, sometime in the 2000s. I think they found like 10 athletes, female athletes, that actually did have XY chromosomes, mm -hmm. which is about 100% higher than the normal population. Yeah, they're all edge cases, but because they they have a particular advantage, they end up in these extraordinary positions like the Olympics. Yeah, for sure. And some people, uh, as I've I've read, actually have uh, testosterone. Their genetic mutation actually includes a blocker for testosterone that doesn't actually cause it to elevate. Mm -hmm. That it's it is a genetic mutation. You know, at its base, you know you're. And but some people apparently still allowed to, are still able to have children. Uh, well, like we were IVF. talking yesterday about, they have a womb. Yeah, we're, but I don't know that she has ovaries. I mean, this and th by the way, all of this seems super invasive. Yeah, in terms of like we are talking about the reproductive organs of an athlete that before yesterday I didn't even know existed. Yeah, and we were talking about the you know male athletes who are really good. Do they have higher than usual testosterone levels or almost certainly would you call like is Aaron judge a genetic mutation? Like he's oh, that's interesting. very big and it shouldn't be, you know, he's way bigger and stronger than other normal, you know, than average people certainly. Yeah. And she, so she had been, competing. we celebrate that if it's a dude though. Yeah. But in this, well, I think a lot of what this gets down to, and I'd like to hear your thoughts on this is that, the fact of the matter is, I think people are super uncomfortable with female boxing. I know I am. Like, I don't actually like the idea of women getting hit in the face. I can't watch women's UFC. I never have been able to. What about the slap league? <laughs> so, you know those, so there's like a competitive slap league that Dana White runs. And we were like, man, wouldn't it be funny if they had a female division? And uh, they do. Yeah. And it's just women slapping each other. Right. And it's really unsettling. But kind of funny too, but it's very unsettling. Slash. But to me, uh. there's this interesting <laughs> thing where people were saying, like, I, this is making me sick to my stomach. I can't stand seeing this woman, you know, hit in the face. And I'm like, okay, but that was the sport. Like, yeah. Like, that is the sport. Yeah. And, like, and do you like seeing guys hit in the face? I, I also, don't actually like boxing yeah. in general. Like, I love Muhammad Ali, like, as a person and as a character. But I never was able to really watch a lot of fights. The best boxing is Boxing Helena. You ever seen that? That's that creepy movie with Julian Sands. Yes, uh, where what they would call boxing is cutting off her arms and legs. That's so creepy. No, no. That's the best. Yeah. That's the no, best. it's a love story. The He's love in love story. with her. Okay, okay so yeah. anti-her, right. pro-boxing Helena. Right. Okay, fair enough. So we don't know what kind of testing they did, and she's right. Probably a lot of it, because that's what people, the libs of TikToks of the world are like, you know, it's disgusting. You know, used to, if you saw a man hitting a woman, then it would cause outrage. I'm like, well, hmm. you know. <laughs> I think a lot of people just don't, are uncomfortable seeing women just get beat up. But if that's what they want to do, they can do it. 
And if they but, want to be really good at it, that they could do it at a high level. But there is a different um, dynamic when they feel as though there's male advantage because women, even though it's uncomfortable seeing women hit, there's something that you feel like, okay, if it's other women fighting women, then it feels more comfortable. But if it's a, if it's somebody that has a male advantage beating women, it can be, you know, it, it, it does get into really tricky territory. And I hear you that it's libs of TikTok, but I got to tell you, that was a lot of other people that I saw. Like, yeah. I don't I don't think that was like, well, like far right. No, people. but like, the I problem is a lot of people. people were calling her trans. That's and she's not. Correct. Her That's passport, correct. she's Algerian. Like one of the most repressive states regarding like homosexuals. Like being transgender is illegal. It's illegal. Her right. passport says female. She, you can see pictures of her when she's a little girl, and she looks, fe- and she's a she's a little girl. Algeria will kill you if you are homosexual. And another thing too, it's not like she's just been. That's a thing. She's eighty eight and O. She's been beaten by other women many times. She was in the last Olympics. Yeah, she lost. She's okay. She has nine losses to other women. I don't really know anything about in this her person career. Or She's how, not just dominating. I I understand, but I think but it's one just of the this things, one. But, the, but first of all, girl is like, oh, now she hits too hard. She's probably trans. Okay, w- what I'm going to say because she kind of looks a yes mannish, B, but as many B, female uh, top athletes do. Whatever this complicated top. case is, it's it's edging up against one of the most explosive conversations in sports, which is trans women's participation in competitive sports, not just at the Olympic right. level, but it but in high such a com- and colleges. It's yeah. such yes, that's it's why such it's- a big uh, conversation for such a actual minimal thing that rarely, if ever, actually happens. That's not true, though. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Go ahead. Okay. I'm saying back up. You're saying that it's true. Go ahead. Name all these uh, men who have become women that are dominating college sports. Dominating college sports? No, but I'm talking about in high schools. Uh, Go ahead then. I don't have their names. The point is, it's not common. It is highly uncommon. I don't know. One person that anyone has heard of in their state. I know we have the one guy. Mac Beggs. That did the uh, wrestling. Common in a in a in this nation, it is. I think what people are you worried might not about. Be able to name one. It's not state. common. I agree with you, but what I think people are worried about that are worried about it is that it's going to become common. Right. That once you say that this is okay, and you normalize it, that it could right. become. But again, that's what panic is. Yeah. That's what unfounded panic. That's what culture war is all about. It's about stuff that really isn't happening, but it could. Yeah, so I was let's told, get you fired up, as get to the as, ballot box, you, you as, better vote. As soon as uh, we allowed uh, gay marriage, that people would be marrying their toaster. And right. It hasn't you materialized know, they, quite yet. They've been marrying, um, actually, uh, somebody married a roller coaster? Yeah, there is the objective Again. sexual thing. Yeah. That's a great documentary uh, if you've never seen it. Uh, yeah. Somebody I mean, tried to marry the Eiffel Tower, but that was like look, 15 I, years ago. I tried seeing it, but then, yeah, you can't because of... Um, Governor Adams. Governor Adams, yeah, too porny. They blocked it. <laughs> I, I, I want to see the guy have sex yeah. with the... I appreciate y'all's rational take on this, but I think you're force-fielding what is actually a really interesting and fraught discussion by saying it doesn't exist or that it's not big enough. I think, you know, my friends who have kids, and I don't have kids, but my friends who have kids tell me about, you know, no, not college kids dominating, but you're talking about social contagions or... Uh, you know the the increase in number going from one or two of these cases to you know 10 12 20 so i i, I th- again that's just not happening it's that's- not i mean it's a yes it's an interesting hypothetical as is um you know a stadium full of uh uh, okay. Little people fighting uh, ten MMA guy or something. You know, it's like <laughs> <That's> the- <laughs> I'm just saying these that things would be- aren't happening. Is the point? Okay. Well, I also I have daughters and one who is really athletic, and that's just never been a concern. That oh my gosh, all these dudes who want to pretend they're ladies so they can be in that's not happening. It's not going to happen. It's ridiculous. Well, in this particular the case, the the. Sad part about it is, if this person has always was born with female, mostly female reproductive organs, a lot of times, apparently, in the little bit of reading I did on this, they actually, in the womb, 
if they have an intersex trait to them, they will develop testicles inside of their body. Yeah, I heard that. So they do not present, you know, so these are all very nuanced cases. Uh, and it's awesome that the host on Fox News have now apparently have genetic biology degrees and can just say, you know, this is that, this is this. I also think it's really interesting if you're going to start saying that you can just say, hey, if you were born intersex, um, then you are this or that. It's going to have some interesting implications that I don't know that everybody's thought through whenever they want to yell about the Olympics. But for this woman in particular, who is she supposed to fight? And where is she supposed to go to the bathroom? Well, I think the bigger thing is you're basically telling this person you can't participate in sports. Right. Because even though you're not trans, you haven't had any surgeries, you don't take any hormones. You're identifying with you've what you've always been you a woman, assigned at birth. Then you can't ever be in sports because yeah. she's going to get destroyed if she goes and fights Olympic male boxers. Mm -hmm. She's already losing to female Olympic bo or boxers, you know? Right. So you're basically just telling this entire group of people. Now, it's different. I do think it's different if you had a surgery and you're taking hormones. Sure. That, and as a surgery is obviously less important, but if you're taking hormones, but, but again, you, you should not really That's be also able a to. pretty rare if that even ever happens. I mean, it does happen, but as far as it affecting the sports world, that's very rare. Yeah. I just don't think you should just, yeah, that's, and that's sad. It just all these like, people hey, who are really fired up about it now give a flying F about women's sports. I think that's also pretty disingenuous. But I, to Sarah's point, I do see that when you have a kid and you want to protect them, that parents, j junior high, high school parents would be worried you know, of daughters that, hey, this is not fair. This is going to be a problem. But again, she has been beaten several, several times, and the other girl didn't get knocked out yesterday. I've never heard of anybody quitting a boxing match in my life. She just quit. That's weird. But I guess she quit because she thought it was unfair. Anyways. And she probably knew before the fight what the situation was, and at the first sign of... That I'm, she had been... Going to get my ass kicked. Disqualified in yeah. 2023? Sure. Yeah, but she's fought on the women's circuit for eight years. Right. She had been disqualified... A year ago, right? Because but of again, testosterone levels or whatever. That was by the the IBA, which now no longer governs this. Uh -huh. The Olympics looked at the IBA and said, pretty shady. Don't know that we like this. And if the Olympics are calling you shady. That's the thing. But uh, I'm just glad we're no longer talking about the, uh, the drag opening ceremony. <laughs> we should have prepared ourselves for this. Write this down, Blake. Okay. When we're doing a Olympics talk in two years, I want us to beforehand predict some controversies. Because these were so plain to see. Everybody's mad about everything in art anyway. So it's in France. You knew that people were going to be pissed off about the opening ceremony. We could have called that. And if we had really put our thinking caps on, we would have been able to call somebody's going to get mad about one of these women looks like a man. Yeah. Yeah. I probably would have said like, a little too much Palestine? Give it time. In my look at the comment days, which I think are completely gone now for the betterment of my mental health, I've seen quite a few less Sarahs, and that segment is why I disagree. She's a great compliment to Dan because she's very, very sharp and will oftentimes fight Dan on some things. I think she's a great addition to the show, but I guess that's just my opinion. Hope you enjoy the Sarah appearances, and if you don't, just skip ahead. That's your right now in this podcast world. After all, you do pay our salary. And if you don't, if you just take in these free episodes, subscribe so you can finally say you pay our salary and you can dictate our run sheet. All right. You pay our salary and you send us emails. Here's viewer mail from Thursday, August 1st. Wait, are we done with Olympics? Yeah. Okay. That's when I said that was done with the Olympics. Did I interrupt you? No, I mean, I think that's why you... Okay. I really wasn't listening. I was all geared up for that. <laughs> I'm very happy you were. For a Frankel spot. Um, Let me go first. Because it relates to the Olympics. We have a real back and forth here between uh, Blake and Dr. Garrett. <laughs> Blake went and saw a lady who plays a clear electric... Lindsay Sterling. Electric violin. She's a big deal. Play, a lot of people know uh, who's... Like, what, like ephemeral music? I don't even know the word for it. Uh, she's just an electric violinist. Um... She's on America's Got Talent. She's hot. She plays 
music that makes you feel like it's from your Nintendo game. Mm, that's and so kinda, you went to okay. go see her. That's cute from you, Zach Bryan, man. And uh, <laughs> wildly different, wildly different. But so Garrett said, you know, he hit us up and said, "Hey, um, you know, I was watching women's gymnastics." And uh, I noticed that one of the floor routines was set to uh, Blake's little crush, Lindsey Sterling, and her Hello Kitty violin. And he it's told a us that. Violin. <laughs> and then we we informed Blake of that, and Blake was like, "Yeah, okay, cool. I I went to her show, but you're the one sitting there just so in tune with women's gymnastics that you noticed the music." Right. That was a good comeback, Blake. What's his? A volley from Garrett. Uh-huh. While watching the women's gymnastics qualifier, I asked my wife who the musician was for that floor routine. She told me, Lindsey Sterling, which is the last concert concert I went to before we started dating. Hey. Now, he uses some terms here that I think are a little out of date, but I am reading an email. Sort of like we were in court. You got to read it. <laughs> he says, so yes, by watching the U.S. women's gymnastics, I am gay, but I am gay for the USA. Blake is still gay for liking a woman who dances around while playing a clear plastic violin. It's not plastic. Hope this settles it. <laughs> so he's just reiterating his first point. Oh, all right. <laughs> okay. That's cute. You watch Olympics with your wife. <laughs> yeah, who would do that? Not me who just referenced doing it four times. Uh, a few birthdays. Hi, Dan. I want to wish my son Zachary Tan happy birthday. His leaders are the NFL on Nickelodeon crew in <laughs> Making Mud. More Danny from Michael Tan. P.S. O.J. Simpson killed Steve McNair. <laughs> you know, in was... my younger days, I would have been able to tell you who did that. She was Persian. I know that. Then she did herself, too, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because he... Couldn't leave his family for her. Look, now they're together. That's a good Didn't point. she want to kill herself so she'd fall right on him or something like that? Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Uh, unironically, Dan the man. I want to give a shout out to my brother Kirk on his Doke Walker birthday. <laughs> you still voting for that? No. His company offers the. Day I'm off very glad that you got it right this time. Yeah, I was. I was going to say that's impressive. This is the first time ever, literally. Mm. Oh, your Ray Guy vote. Uh, his company offers the day off for his birthday, but he didn't take it. What a putz. Putz? How's that? Um, also, you guys talk a lot about mental health. Sometimes on point, sometimes just off center. I'm a licensed professional counselor. I've been a therapist for 20 years. Let me know if you need some input from a professional perspective. No, I'm good. Have fun on the DZRV, Logan. <laughs> Do we talk a lot about mental health? It might be once a month something comes up, and I'm just like, yeah, I've, I've go to therapy. Well, let's cut that back a little bit. I would yeah. gladly do that. Yeah, will you stop? Yes. Greetings, Dan. It is my you find me with a gunshot wound in my head. <laughs> <laughs> um, Steve McNair style. I hope you do it so that you fall on top of me. Me too. <laughs> Me too. Or but don't six, shoot me first, but I'll let you, if you want to just do yourself. Maybe a 690 sit-in. And fall in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, 50th birthday, I'm a day one DF, number 426. So close to that covered 420. My leaders are Blake's wife's aggressive ni nipple play mm -hmm. and Jake's pegging kit. Mm-hmm. We're open-minded here. <laughs> My wife will not wake me up in that special way, but I hope I can get put to get get put to bed with a Jake special from Michael. I don't know that that what what would be your special. I don't know. Is he talking pegging? Maybe. Yeah, that's not going to put you to bed, bud. You're going to be crying. So, <laughs> Uncle Victor, it's my Marion Barber plus John Kitna birthday. <laughs> I don't. I don't. Twenty-four and three. Six? Six. What was Kidna? My leaders are Baby Gronk's dad, Frozen Caveman Lawyer, and Gash. <laughs> no puppet drop. 
I sent 420 to the Venmo so Jake will acknowledge this email. More Dutch from Mason from Bridgeport. Bulls. All out. Heil Muff Fuhrer. The girls are sissies. Mm, I forgot about that, yeah. Day 8 subby, number 3188, Travis Gafford. Oh, good dude. While I have not smoked a cigarette with Jake, I did host him and his very pregnant wife at a Portland Timbers game back in 2018. That was so badass. Man. MLS. So cool. I knew I had picked the right leader when he referred to her as Shamu multiple times <laughs> while I was taking them to the field level. <laughs> I, don't, I don't recall that at all, but... <laughs> Speaking of pregnancies, happy birthday and introduce you to the first official DZ baby, Lincoln Travis Gafford, born 731-24. Nice. I like Lincoln. That's a great name. Just mere minutes from the Dragon Den. And he has donned his first of its kind DZ onesie as his first ever outfit. He sent a picture of the baby. That's amazing. With a uh, dumb zone labeled onesie. Special shout out to Raymond from E6 who created... Listed and shipped the onesie within a couple of days of me asking. Dumbzonemerch.com. Hook you up with Raymond. Raymond also created a big and tall section on Dumbzonemerch.com at my request. I do remember Travis being a, a big guy. He says, tall I am guy. six feet, eight inches tall. Yep. I know what Dan is thinking, but uh, luckily for both me and my wife, she had a C-section, so no e- extra stitches required. She might need one just from the fact you're six eight. <laughs> <laughs> but what I meant to say was, welcome to the world, Lincoln, and happy zero day. Raymond will... You contact Raymond, and he'll just do whatever you want. So if you have a t-shirt idea, just contact him. He'll do it. Good morning, Titan of the Tang. <laughs> My name is Kyle Myers. It is my Bill Bates slash Mike Allstott birthday. Great, dude. I've seen him whip some ass before. Leaders are... Fight night? Just after a softball game. Interesting. Leaders are Dan El Mayo McDowell and Leather Jacket Jake watching Frasier. <laughs> it really is a good show. <laughs> my two favorites. More Blake Jack. from Kyle Myers. And Uncle Hotmail, I hope this reaches uh, this inbox from my lowly Yahoo. Business Wednesday was my Kyrie times Derek Lively birthday. My leaders are Flag Football Jake, Dan Holding Stuff, and Video Man Laughing. More Blake, Ben, number 665, day two. So close. I have a little bit of follow-up because we were mocking... The baby on board bumper stickers, because there's what there, you've seen more of them on the road. I just saw a couple over the weekend, and I thought they're back. It's not a bumper sticker; it's like a uh, it goes on your back windshield. It's like a yield sign, the yeah. yellow uh, diamond, mm-hmm. right? So I'll read the comments on you. I'll admit to that. And uh, in the comment section, it says, "Baby on board signs are so first responders know there's a kid back there." If there is an accident, since, you know, most babies can't just let the responders know, hey, Dill, I'm back here. I was like, oh, okay, that kind of makes sense. Let me ask a real first responder if that's true. He says, and I quote, for half the cost of a- Sorry? I have never looked for one of those signs. It means nothing to me. If I miss an occupant in a vehicle, it means I have failed my at my job. That's what I was thinking. So comment section, shut up. Yeah. We'll get to the bottom of this. You're usually wrong. You're we wrong, just comment section. We usually just don't address it, you know? Some guy got on me the other day saying that uh, capping rents is not a nationwide uh, favorable policy. It is. I have the study. Yeah, and I mixed up... Suck my nutsack. ...where the celebration <laughs> station was in Mesquite. Sorry. Yeah, how about that? I mean, think about it. Like, you, you, you get like a bad car accident. There's a pretty decent chance your back windshield is broken. And are they like, before I look in this car, no, 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 no. Let, let me sort through the rubble here. See if there was a see sticker if I can on the back. find a sticker. And he's like piecing it together. Is it like, yellow? Was it I yellow? I see it says B-A on this side. There's an O. Was there a picture B-O. of a Bambi he's though? Like, but what is this? B-O-B-O. I don't know, dude. Let's just get out of here. We got this. B-O-B-O? 
what could this be? I, and then he, you know, he can't find the other sticker. And when he finds the other half of the sticker, the baby's dead. <laughs> I have one email to read to close us out. This is from Drop Beth. All right. Now, Drop Beth told us uh, a few weeks ago that she uh, went in for the uh, the old breast check. Hey, now. And I could have done that. That she had some bre- yeah, bro. little breast <laughs> cancer. Oh, oh, sorry. You guys still want to have your fun? I feel like I could have probably found the lump, but okay. Well, anyway, she said they caught it early, and it's not something that's real dangerous. But uh, cool. I think she has. <laughs> she's she's having a surgery here uh, August eighth, so a week from today. Her Ooh. real concern was being. Uh, Hoping she could still make the the Rangers Day. <laughs> That's uh, our concern too. In September. Yeah. She said she has no chemo or radi- radiation expected. But the real reason she followed up and told us this was she said she will be getting the Julia Louis Dreyfus and can now confirm, as Jake assumed or understood, you do get to choose your rebuild. Oh, really? Yeah. So. If the next time Drop Beth comes in with all of our drops and she has like F's, yeah, right. uh, Stormy Daniels, <laughs> we're like, you know, why don't you come in every day? Yeah, <laughs> we'll pay. We'll pay for the gas. Why yeah. be a stranger? <laughs> Good luck, Beth, <laughs> with your top. Yes, Drop Beth told us a few weeks ago that she had breast cancer, but is in really good spirits because they caught it really, really early. And to quote Jake, she gets to pick to rebuild. But uh, we're with you, Beth. All right, I'm giving you permission to skip this next one because some of you will be hearing this for the fourth time. But if you aren't an every sewed listener, here is our July monthly business review from our Friday Patreon-only episode. It's that time. Of the okay, month. he's got it now, Blake. <laughs> it's time for the Dumb Zones monthly business review. And now the king of all note takers. Here's Blake Jones. Thank you, voice man. Uh, a big month to recap in July. Got a lot of notes from the show. Got some audio that I'd like to intertwine. Uh, but as always, let's start with things Dan or Jake want. And uh, let's go back to the very first of the month when we were at the VFW. Jake said he wants a street named after him. And I don't know what you're going to do to get that, but I'd love to see Kemp Lane. The easiest way I can think of today is become president of the Dad's Club. (laughs) But other than that, I don't know. I'd probably have to save somebody from certain death, and I don't even know if that would do it. Maybe I could become mayor, and they would just rename William D. Tate. If you get killed, that's that might do it. Yeah, but it probably depend on how. Right? No, it has to be. You can't just be like, oh, good car accident. Maybe a we, cop shoots you, but unjustly they're going to their wrong address or something. <laughs> that has in the past proven to be pretty effective. Yeah, it's worked. Or if you were a leader from the past, but you're not that. Yeah, but most of them got shot too. Yeah. Or if you were something was done unjustly to you. Well, I guess now nah, and I was thinking MLK, but of course, yeah. He got shot. Malcolm X. But like I think Bob Jones Park in South Lake is like Bob Jones was a former slave or something or some kind of civil rights guy. I don't know. Hmm. I think. The point is it's unlikely. I'd rather have Pilot Beezy's lane, if I'm being honest. He deserves it. On July 16th, I think you did a story in the news, Jake, where maybe somebody in Lubbock, they saved an owl with a tortilla. I don't remember that at all. Like an owl fell in their pool or something, and then they rescued it and laid it in a tortilla and saved it somehow. And then we discover that it's illegal to have owl Oh, feathers. yeah, now I do remember this, yeah. July 16th, Dan wants an owl feather. It's only because it's. they said I can't have one. <laughs> I don't really want one. July 17th, Jake wants to meet Rose, which needs to happen in Cleveland. He will. Would you go see Fast 10 with her or whatever? I would go see anything she wanted to go see. I think you need to see a movie with her. I would love that. <laughs> I would absolutely love that. 
And this is kind of rich because Dane is the most organized person I know. Dane wants to be more organized. Dude, I am not that organized. It's insane, I'm dude. all over the place. It's crazy. I used to have this conversation with Bob and Dan all the time where we had 90 to 95% of everything that we ever needed or looked for while nobody else on the station archives their shows. Nobody else on the station uses Dropbox. and I mean, maybe now until we did and I did. But... The, and, and nobody else on the station went back up to the station whenever we moved and started archiving all of the entire file. I would go up at night, I would plug a hard drive into the uh, server room, and I would just zoom files over so we had everything when we moved. Turns out, uh, none of that mattered because uh, the guy was like, oh, this format's not going to work anyways. I'm like, well, I'm about 30 hours in here. But the point is, something would come up that we didn't have like once every month. And there'd be like, it was like the shit would just hit the fan. Like, God, what are we going to get this stuff? And I'm like, dude, you're letting whatever the phrase is, like good be the enemy of perfect or perfect be the enemy of good. Like we're doing way, way more than anyone else is. But the one time we don't have something every once in a while, it was like, this is a goddamn mess. <laughs> like we're just, and I'm like, this is insane. Like the level of meticulousness that we're applying to this show and him, and he wants to be more organized. It is a disease. It is OCD. That's what it is. Yeah, he busts out. My biggest fault. I'm a perfectionist. Yeah. Bust out letters from early '90s. Yeah, he's got his. He's got ah, tapes mess. that he digitized from 30 years ago. Yeah, but I don't have all of them. I do have the Sea World letter <laughs> right in my hand. We'll get to that later. I can't wait. Not today. Time capsule. <laughs> All right, let's slip into the time capsule. It's extremely aggressive, and I love it. July 2nd, Dan says he's going to be optimistic about going on the RV to California. Boy, that lasted about four <laughs> days. I'm optimistic. I'm happy that... You haven't fallen off quite yet. I don't mind a... Um, well, I just don't mind a, a plane trip. I don't mind trips in general because it, it allows me to do a lot of stuff. Yeah, I got a list. I got a lot of stuff to get done. What if we... I think uh, that we're going to be on the RV together. We'll... We can have uh, meetings over meetings, and there's just a lot of stuff we don't, you know, we see each other a lot, but then we depart, and we got a lot of stuff to work on. And so we need to get our act organized. Like, <laughs> again, like, what are we doing this for is, the fall lineup? Yeah. When it. are we picking games? Who are we picking games with? Like, we need to t talk all this stuff out. Oh, yeah, for sure, I mean, baby. Yeah. You okay. Don't you think? Yeah. I I'm, I'm feeling good. I'm ready to go. I'll be there at 7. Well, it's at your house, so... Well, I know. I'm pretty happy that you guys did that. <laughs> like, if I had to drive somewhere and be there at 7? Yeah. We would never ask you to do that. Thank you. July 26th, Dan says the school bill banning phones during school hours won't make the year. <sighs> it's going to be tough. It will be tough. It will but be it's tough. kind of spread, right? It started in Keller. Now it's in Grapevine, Colleyville. Yeah, there'll be a bunch of them to do it. The change, though... It's hard to go back. I know everybody wants to go back, you know, to the way things used to be, but it's it's very difficult to do. Once you, you know, newspapers can't now suddenly revive themselves and say, oh, I, we should have done this on the sure. the internet coming. So, Kind of in the same vein, I said that the new NFL kickoff rule won't last five years. Very jarring last night. I don't know how much of the game y'all watched. I watched that. I watched a few. So weird. Off and on the first half. Oh, we think it's weird. Caleb Williams, even though it's an extra game, just like can't even take a series. It's the way it is now, dude. It's ridiculous. It's really weird. It's really weird because they they played. Why do they some, even have free? free they played season? some other clip last night. I can't remember what it was, but it was a preseason game, and whoever was in the game, I recognized both of them. Oh, it was uh, when they were talking about Sean Taylor. It was a preseason game, and like LeVar Arrington's out there, Sean Taylor's out there, sure. uh, whoever they were playing, receivers were out there, first team. It's weird, but um, I don't know if it makes it five years, but I do think I like it. I like having two return guys back there. That's interesting. Not every team will do it, but you can. Sorry you hate fun, Blake. I guess I just, just don't like change. I'm going to get you a shirt that says, I heart touchbacks. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. 
Uh, same day, Jake says he'll never see another horror movie. Yeah. What if they? What if they just moved the kickoff back to the ten yard line, and you weren't able to make it a touchback? Oh, they're trying to take away the high high speed collisions. Yeah, that's that's part of it. They're kind of trying to sell you as this is going to. Why be Why don't again? they just make them wear skirts? That's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't. I don't recall the last one I saw. I don't recall the last movie that I saw that would uh, qualify as a horror movie. It's just not. It's never been my thing. Your kids will get into it, and you'll watch one. I wasn't into it as a kid. Oh. I've never been into it. Yeah, I don't know how my daughter got into it. I mean, I've seen The Shining. She does it for comedy. But I don't. I didn't like it or wanted. It's yeah, like, it's it, you're, you're, It's more funny. I know, and I know a lot of people like that. Like I, I have an, uh, an aunt, an aunt, who is the sweetest, nicest suburban mom you could imagine. Uh, she's married to an Aggie. All three, all of her kids are Aggies. They all married Aggies. It's like nice just piece. the most, <laughs> just the most sweet, funny lady. She is like obsessed with like the Saw series and Hostel and all of it. Yeah, I don't know what Hostel is. I it's was, I was yeah. obsessed with Saw. Hostel was a tough one because it was not that long before I went to Spain. That's why I won't stay in one. Yeah. But anyway, that's something we're tracking. Never happened again. You don't have to track it. I'm telling you. We'll see about that. What? Chip spins. <laughs> You're up to 509, five unique ones in the month of July. Uh, I'll just give you a couple, starting with Jim Bob Cooter. Well, first his name is Jim Bob Cooter, Mm -hmm. um, but also when he was, I think he was a GA at Tennessee, he uh, very drunkenly, mistakenly, I guess, crawled in through the window of a female student's apartment and got into her bed and I believe fell asleep. Yeah. LaShawn McCoy? The one that immediately comes to mind is a time that he, I believe it was when he was in Buffalo, but it might have been Philadelphia, uh, posted a flyer for a a party that he was having, and it was clearly targeted at females. There was a cross-section in downtown where he said that uh, a bus would pick you up, no phones allowed. So it's clear that he was just like looking for an Mm -hmm. orgy. Right, he was just gonna fly in his own or bus in his own talent, and that post was taken down in about an hour. <laughs> Dustin Johnson, cocaine, might have been sleeping with other players' wives on the tour. <laughs> yeah, that was the money shot. And then uh, one recently, Reese McGuire. Yep, uh, caught masturbating in a Dollar Tree parking lot in Florida at spring training. That one's tough. Because he was so pent up, because he, he had a bunch, bunch of, of dudes. Yeah. yeah, I had a bunch of roommates that could escape. That's that. You know, that's the real, the real nail in the coffin there. Jake has a buddy. Settle down over there. There's not many. Uh, Jake has a buddy who got arrested in Scurry County. Yep. Jake had a buddy who was really into Smallville. Yep. And Jake had a buddy who did cocaine while working at a restaurant. I bet anybody who knows somebody who's working at a restaurant has a buddy who's done that. <laughs> There's no doubt. That's that's where the bear's not realistic, right? Yeah, that's the one thing. They did, they did have that guy that got caught smoking meth, and I thought the one realistic thing that happened in that scene was when Marcus goes back there, they're looking for him on opening night, and when Marcus goes back there and sees him out by the trash can smoking meth, he's like... I think I have to fire you for this. And the guy's been working at restaurants his whole life. He's like, for this? Yeah. <laughs> like, this is a restaurant. How do you think I'm getting through this? Yeah. But yeah, there was a, uh, an era where it started to dawn on me that when my family would go to Olive Garden, that the waiter, the waiters were just like extremely cranked up. I think Jay told us as much. Yeah, he kind of did. And that everyone sleeps with each other. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Roseanne's. <laughs> We've had an update to this list uh, because it was just Roseanne's. Yeah. Um, but thanks to a viewer mail submission, it's now the Roseanne Bar. I like it. Do they pass the Roseanne Bar? That's genius. On July 3rd, Ricky Lake. Yep. 100% That's Roseanne. Center Square. Yeah. She's 23 and me. It comes back. It just says Roseanne. <laughs> Vince Neal. Yep. Um, I think this, you'd mentioned this. Uh, when you first started it, but we finally got it on the list. Your grandma. 
<laughs> a square Roseanne. And then um, it pains me to say it, but it might have been the genesis of the bit in my mind. <laughs> this is this one's a bit complex. John Goodman, who was in Roseanne, yeah, is a male. I think he's a Roseanne. I don't know if it's uh, osmosis, but I mean, typically you're going to be heavy set for a start, but there's just a certain face. I think John Goodman might have at least half Roseanne. Oh, yeah. All of a sudden, he turns Roseanne. <laughs> <laughs> Who got ball sacked? Ball sacks. What have we been wrong about? Probably you. Uh, me. Yeah. July 3rd, I was wrong about the SMU tax fraud story. I, I couldn't believe that. That was a real low point. It was. It. Yep. I got caught. Uh, I was also wrong about the Ben Stiller and Christine Taylor pandemic divorce. Uh, they actually got brought back together due to the pandemic. I don't know if that counts or not, but I'm glad right, if you want to out memory. yourself. Because that's yeah. the way I remembered it, too. Yeah. Very rare case of the pandemic. I miss you so much, baby. While admitting wrongs, also wrong about the Silicon Valley reboot. I saw the poster that I saw, and it's just a, hey, celebrate the 10-year anniversary by re-watching it on HBO Max. Oh, okay, so they're not getting back together. No, unfortunately. Um, you know that, uh, what's his name, Thomas Middlebridge? Middlebridge? Oh, is yeah. that right? Thomas Miller right. was a Red Sox. He is, uh, I don't know if he's still with his wife or not, but he was in like a full-on open relationship, which is funny because in the show, you just look at him like this massive dork, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. no hose. <laughs> but uh, I remember hearing him talk about it once and, once and just thought, oh, I guess. That does not look like a guy in an open relationship. I know. <laughs> Um, and then the biggest one from the month was you thought the UK prison sex video was real. I wanted it to be real. <laughs> it's just so clearly not. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I feel like I saw, okay, hear me out. I saw a video that was posted either on TikTok or Instagram where the, the lady who's in the video is with her husband and it's not like pornographic. Like it's a funny couples TikTok thing where they're like guessing things about each other. Because people were like, hey, you know, this lady's wearing a wedding ring. And they went to her account, I guess, and found it and put it up and said, hey, this is actually her husband. She's married to this guy. I don't know why that convinced me, but I thought, okay, well, this is a real person. It seems like a long con. Yeah, I keep seeing different. I saw some misinformation, misinformation on that this week. That they, prison video? Back to that video, yeah. Like that actually somebody did get in trouble for it or something. I don't know. This is going to be just, just enjoy our porn anymore. This is just going to be Santa Claus for me. I'm just going to believe it. I don't know what USA crime is there on the, the screen, but. All right. Dan fights with his wife. We just have one. I'm glad, but, I'm glad we don't have a sounder for me on this one. <laughs> but it's a funny one. From July 15th, you two got in a fight because she wanted to recycle the old vacuum cleaner and you didn't think it, you could. Oh, yeah. You definitely can't. I don't think so, but I also remember, remember right after the fight, I was like, I'm not really sure I was right on that, <laughs> but I just I had to stand my ground once I started right. it. Although we did kind of get in a little altercation about the whole chainsaw chainsaw situation. Yeah, that was on the first. We'll hear about that next month. Oh, okay, good. All right, uh, let's end with some notes from the show. I have a it lot. It says of here, these. most vacuum parts, such as rubber, plastic, and metal components, can be recycled. Hmm. But I don't know if you could just put the whole thing in there. Maybe. I don't know. Whatever. Yeah, we just set it out by the garbage, just like we did with the uh, microwave. I'm going to try to run through these notes because I have a lot of them. Um, back to the first of the month. If you'll remember, it was the first day of the month, first day of the week, and the first day of the second half of the year. Uh, I will hope, never forget. I hope it's going well for you. Yeah. I took a couple weeks off, but I'm back in. I got my gallon in the car. Dan had a hard time setting up his new Mac. He also hated that it was always in what he called dark mode. <laughs> Not the screen. The keyboard? The whole Mac oh. is dark, which I thought looked really cool. And your guys' computers look awesome, so I wanted an awesome computer. 
Do everything Jake and Blake do. I know. Mm-hmm. And then now when I'm sitting in front of it at night, yes, it's everything is dark. And I don't like dark mode on the screen. So now it's a big contrast. I mean, you know the the the, the white part of the keys lights up. Kind of, but it's not it's just not the same. <laughs> uh, again, I don't like change. None of it nobody likes change. But I didn't want to have the old color because then it would look like I had the old uh, slaggy computer. <laughs> You can't have Brandon Aubrey thinking that. No. Yeah, no. <laughs> um, what a turn this took. July 1st, Jake called an eight-year-old name's hot. Dude, we already covered it. You yeah. really didn't have to do that no, again. No, I know, but... You really didn't have to. <laughs> it is on the list. It's Yeah, and I got to read it. Uh, July 2nd, we all lost it to the dog eating the heart clip from One Tree, <laughs> One Tree Hill. <laughs> Pretty great. I think it also screwed us on YouTube, but it was well worth it. Yeah. Same day, uh, William Pace sang to us. Hmm? You're Gavin making so. a first-time call on the radio. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Dan McDowell Show. <laughs> yes. That was the jingle. Wow. Beautiful. Wow. And then, then he made that the jingle on his radio show. That's right. What remember honor. that, Dan? Yeah. Do you remember hey, that? Hey, would you do this for us? Because I know you know this song very well. Were we playing the, um, replaying the whole interview or what? Would you okay. sing Happy uh, Birthday no, it's to edited the Dumb down. Zone? And then we can... Okay, we don't have to play it. Out of the crosshairs. Um, July 3rd, we learn about Jake's leather jacket phase in high school. I'm still mad at Binion for that. The same day... I, it, it, can't hide from your past. The weirdest part about that was that Dan was like... Five minutes later, he's like, so what's the deal with this leather jacket? <laughs> yeah, I never heard about that. Like, really? Why are you hiding it from me? <laughs> leather jacket. It was like 2002. <laughs> well, that's not, why it was not seems happy weird. days. That same day is when viewer mail explained moosing to us. It's only been a month. It feels like it's been around forever. Somebody gave us a um, plush stuffed animal mooses with dumb zone bandanas, and I took it home. And uh, Raymond, like, Raymond made. Yeah, it. Raymond made him, and I, I, I gave it to Nora. I was like, "Hey, I got this from work. Like, do you want to put it in your, in your stuffy box thing?" And she goes, "Is this the team moose of the dumb zone?" And I looked up, and my wife was just staring at me, shaking her head. Like, yeah. I'll bet you get that situation a lot, though. Quite a bit. <laughs> now, well, right now, she's currently obsessed with asking me why were they mean and made you change the name from the hang zone. Mm. Oh, that's right, because your mom told her that, right? Yeah. July 9th, Dan's first car was a 1977 Ford Pinto, and his CB handle was the Challenger because they were known to blow up. That's right. Doing bits, baby. It's legendary. Not very sensitive. July 11th, Dan didn't know emus hatched out of eggs. (laughs) I think I was confusing llamas. Llama, llama, red pajama. And emus. Yeah. Because I think that's Napoleon actually not Dynamite that bad of a mistake. Llama. Yeah, not an emu. I thought he had an emu. I would like some follow up on this one. July eleventh, emu. Dan's <laughs> neighborhood gossip. Someone named Blake, who played for the Mets, is building a house in the neighborhood. Still haven't found out. Neighbor John didn't know his last name. Hmm. And he's really the only dude that I talk to in the neighborhood. Yeah, I would like to know. Maybe Jay. I'll talk to Jay a little bit. Uh, same day, Jake explains how Dan made fun of his relationship <laughs> status on Facebook, so he deleted it. Pretty much. Also, same day, Dan did not accept his wife's Facebook friend request. Again, if you know her, don't tell her that I knew that she, like, I just figured it would just come and go. And Well, it's worked so well whenever you've done this before and said, don't tell her. Yeah. But it was also years ago. And I don't ever look at Facebook. Unless I'm looking to get some. No doubt. July 15th, Dan's friend made his other friend's Hooters girlfriend hula hoop for them. (laughs) Yes, Ed's girlfriend. (laughs) July 17th, we had a guy in a tuxedo in the den. That was funny. Yeah, especially since it was supposed to be a two-guy bit and one guy just bailed on it (laughs) without telling him. Uh, July 17th, we had uh, we had the idea for the Hooters Waitresses Delivery Company. We were kicking around some names like Hordash, mm-hmm. Boober, and Dorgash. Mm-hmm. I received several other ones. I don't have them 
I was not prepared to. People got to to work in the lab on that one quick. I was very impressed. July 17th, Dan told us about the time he bought a bunch of porn VHS tapes at a closeout sale that he put in a Bud Light box. Jake got a box of porn from an older friend when he was going to college. Yeah, friend's older brother. It was a very monumental day in the the neighborhood. When he handed that down? Yeah. And Dan had a community hustler in the shared bathroom dorm. That's probably pretty common. Also from the same day. And I'll bring that. Yeah, in the RV. Need, need to. Same day, Dan explained he had a trainee attempt to give him a catheter. Yeah. It was a dude. <laughs> Shouldn't you know the wiener? Shouldn't that dude know his way around there? Yeah, you'd think. I don't know how. Uh, 726. Uh, Maybe it should be a gay dude doing it, because then he's used to dealing with someone else's wiener. That's Because you're only used to dealing with it from this angle. That's a great point. <laughs> No, it's um, not. <laughs> Dan confuses raw dogging and barebacking. They're the same thing. Not for the uh, cultural... Yeah, the plain thing. ...thing of, yes, going on a trip and not using any technology or reading or anything. That bit still bothers me. Just sitting there. It doesn't really make sense. Just no payoff. No payoff. No. I mean, compare that to the bit of throwing a piece of cheese on the uh, toddler's head. <laughs> There's no comparison. There really isn't. One's great. J- July 29th, Julie reads the I Survived book series to her kids, and they're just about the worst disasters we've had. Got yeah, a lot a of response bit. on that. Yeah. A yeah. lot of people said that's, and there is one about 9 11. Yeah. And then, uh, last one for you, July 30th, Dan looks up Hope Solo's vagina. You guys told me to. Big Montana. <laughs> 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 and there's your NBR. Okay, a few segments left. A little bit of baseball, Jake, here as we could have a first in Major League Baseball. And then one of the weirder Kemp spins we've added to the list. And as far as baseball, Blake, Rangers are in a bad way right now. Some reinforcements are, are coming, but it's hard to turn pitching on. Not looking good with a tough August coming up, but I'm holding out hope with my plus 1,000 division winner bet on the line. Here is your Reese McGuire Kemp spin from Thursday, August 1st from the Dragon Den. How about the uh, long-awaited baseball Jake? (laughs) We don't need an open. Oh. (laughs) Well, this one's interesting because it has a couple of different uh, tentacles to it. Um, Let me pull my note back up here. And I don't really – this is not something I I really particularly care about that much, but I do think that 12-year-old baseball Danny would have really been interested in this. So the Blue Jays traded their catcher of 10 years, Danny Jensen, to the Red Sox. They were playing in a game on June 26th. Those two teams, Blue Jays, Red Sox. The game was suspended due to rain. Jensen was at the plate at the time for the Blue Jays. 0-1 count. Okay, awesome. They suspend the game. That okay, game will awesome. be resumed on August 26th. He is now on the Red Sox. Okay. That is so, yeah. So he has the opportunity to be the first player to ever play for both teams in one game in one day. Because other there have been other players. Because he's at bat. He's at bat. He has to finish the at bat. Well, uh, he doesn't have to. He do, They could pinch hit for him, right? Because it was only 0-1. Yeah. Have you seen... Scoring changes talk about this? I read a I tried to process it, but there's a lot going on. So it because it's uh in O one there haven't been two pitches in the at bat. So when they pinch hit for him, it will count as a new at bat. Okay. So there is also a the rule is there has to be two pitches? Apparently so. Yeah. I, I did see that. So because it was an O one count, they will just pinch hit for him and it'll be a new at bat. There's also the possibility, though, he's currently the backup catcher for the Red Sox. There's also a possibility that if he's in the game that day, which he might be, he will be catching the at-bat that he was replaced for yes. when the game, when the game <laughs> restarts for the uh, as a Red Sox catcher. He will be catching his own pinch hit at-bat. Yeah. <laughs> there have been a number of other times, I guess four other times in baseball history, where someone played for two teams in one day. 
Uh, happened in 1922 twice. Happened in 1982. Guys traded between games of a doubleheader? Uh, yes. Or even like uh, the case of uh, – there's been a couple cases where a guy was uh, had an afternoon game and then got to the night game in time to pinch hit like in the seventh or eighth inning, which you would never ask a guy to do now. I mean, that's gone, right? Yeah. I mean – but it's cool. It is very cool. Yeah. No, um, no one has ever played for both teams in the same game. Right. They're, okay. they're, play, they're playing it's each the other. Exact, yeah. It's the exact same game. Because yeah. different weird things have happened with resumed games. Right. Yeah. But this one. The Pine he, Tar game, I remember. It's something. not just that he got traded from the team he was on to the team that he's going to be playing for when the game resumes. It's that he was at bat. <laughs> When the game was stopped, damn! At that time, if the count was just o two, he would have to hit. And he would th- have to. He would have to hit, and then he would have to <laughs> go change. But then, how you know? How much does he care about the team winning? Not at all. Versus <laughs> his you? own stats. Yeah, just like flail so he's away. Hitting, <laughs> yeah, one strikeout's not going to kill you. Just taken out. Yeah, or if he had hit a home run earlier in the game, and then he hits a home run for the other team later. I. I Oh, that's awesome. And I really hope the Red Sox play him that day just to see how oh, this... They, they will. They probably will just yeah. for history purposes. So his yeah. name will be in the box score. For both. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> First time it'll ever happen. Now, um, <laughs> what's kind of funny about this is it also uh, ties into a story that we completely skipped over when it happened. It might have been because we had best of last week and I was gone for a day, but uh, he's currently the backup for the Red Sox starting catcher, Connor Wong. And the reason that they acquired Jensen and Connor Wong was elevated to starter is that they have DFA'd Reese McGuire. Do you remember what happened a week ago with Reese McGuire? No. Perhaps a better question would be, do you know what happened with Reese McGuire some three years ago? Do you, Blake? No. He was 24 at the time. He was with the Blue Jays. And police responded to a call at 2.07 in the afternoon of a male exposing himself while sitting inside an SUV parked outside of a Dollar Tree store. This was uh, at camp, uh, at spring training. And he was he was jerking it in the parking lot. That lady in Warren, Ohio is not going to be happy about this show either. No. Uh, okay. But this is a police report. He actually got a ticket for indecent exposure. And I guess at the time... Young player, he was living in like a, a, a apartment or dorm type situation with two or three other like on the fringe guys, and I think he told the cops like, "Dude, I, you know, I'm sorry, this is bad, I get it, but, uh, you know, I needed some." I needed he was some. he was under a lot of stress. His his whoop. Yeah. And he had to go out to the parking lot to Can't take care of things. Parking lot. Well, that's what he did. Yeah, I've roomed with four guys before. You got the community, you got the bathroom and the community you, hustler. You figure it out, right? Yeah. You figure it out. Can't do shower. In so, fact, I was wondering in the uh, DZRV, will there be a community hustler? <laughs> <laughs> I will. I got you that Pia Zadora Playboy. I do I, have the old Playboy. I have the Enron Playboy. Women of Enron. Okay. Still have that one. Want to bring it for travel? Sure. But the reason that this resurfaced Can recently was uh, that from, again, from the makers of People Don't Forget, there was a bench-clearing brawl between the Red Sox and Rockies about a week, week and a half ago, where Cal Quantrill, the uh, pitcher for the Rockies, uh, is jawing back and forth with Reese McGuire, who's at the plate. And you can very, very clearly see you don't need to be John Boy to knock down this lip reading bit that Cal yells, You jacked off in a fucking parking lot, you dumb fuck. <laughs> and then the bench is cleared. <laughs> That's awesome. So Reese McGuire, been struggling. They brought up the jacking off thing. He got sent down and now That is that is the perfect Jensen might end up playing in two games. That is the perfect for people teams. don't forget. Yeah, I mean that's a tough one to to get past, you know. I mean, but just to have that in your back pocket, ready to go. Yeah, yeah, and I don't know. I don't know if it would have been better if it were like a Neiman Marcus, but Dollar Tree. That's not that's, good. It wasn't. It wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't a Cheesecake Factory. No, least. Cheesecake Factory would have been would have been a step up. But I, it, yeah. it's tough to come up with something lower than a Dollar Tree if you're going to get caught in Florida. If you're going to get caught 
you know, jerking off. But yeah, you can, the video is awesome, uh, Dan. You can just see him walking off, just yelling, you jacked off in a fucking fucking <laughs> I told you I had baseball. That's great. All right. Baseball Jake. Need more baseball Jake. You want to talk about the Copac trade bet? at all? <sighs> Dodgers are heating up, Blake. Like, why not in the shower or in your room late at night? I mean, we've all been desperate before, but that's just kind of insane to me. In public, in your car, in public, in a parking lot. Uh, but when you got to go, you got to go, I guess. All right, this next one is short, and maybe it's only funny because I was in the room for it, Um, but I've got to play it. Dan had to Google a woman's private part with us in the room. Hope Solo is 43? (laughs) (laughs) What's her bit? Say it. Uh, She's got a lot of them. I mean, you could start with, like, her boyfriend was a a tight end for the Seahawks, and they used to fight all the time. What's his name? Chris and Faria, yeah. Maybe a Packer at one point, too? Yeah, um, and she would just like beat the shit out of him. So you always see these domestic violence cases, and you're like, "Man, are you sure?" Then the cop would show up and be like, "She was wailing on this dude." And then also some of her nudes got leaked, and uh, you know, in general, as we've discussed, nobody really wants to look at a vagina, <laughs> but I would rather look at any other one than that one. <laughs> Wizard sleeve. Really? It's dude. It's 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 uh yeah yeah. Can I search Hope Solo vagina in my work? Hope Solo wizard sleeve. If actually, if you honestly, if you search Hope Solo, it's not it's not auto filling. Ro- no, auto fill won't do that. It won't fill well, vagina. It's no. not auto filling meat curtains. No. <laughs> Images. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, you don't want. Oh yeah, you don't want to see that. No, that's. Why would you make me uh, do that? Yeah, it's why did you a lot bookmark of Rose it? Arby's, yeah. Why, yeah, why'd you add it to your <laughs> tab on the top? Oh, now it's on the TV. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. She was a goalie, so maybe you're. Just oh no, getting... I shared it with the family. <laughs> Does your TV do your phone stuff? Like the memories and stuff, family share? No, I don't do that. No, I don't either. But I have seen situations on the internet where that went real wrong for people, though. Yeah, because uh, our downstairs TV will take from my wife's desktop favorite uh, photos so when it's you know the screensaver after it's sitting there for 10 minutes horrible um, there's Steve's on <laughs> <laughs> Steve's on's wiener for inquiring minds just just don't okay it's uh just don't <laughs> alright we need a palate cleanser here's our news and today in history from our Monday epi with Julie to close us out Jeez. here's Jay with the dumb there were two more earthquakes Saturday in West Texas, Dan. Okay, is this all fracking? Yes. Again? Okay. Yes. These ones were also felt in at Dallas Fort Worth, apparently. I don't get I never get to feel them. I never feel it Everyone's either. Everyone's telling no. me I felt the earthquake and I don't I never get to feel them. Where was it felt? It says all over Dallas. Huh. Seems like they usually felt in Irving. Like for whatever aftershocks. Reason. Well, initially the Irving one was at that Texas Stadium site. Yeah. There was something weird going on there, but this one county, Scurry County. Blake, I got a buddy who got arrested in Scurry County. Scurry? Yeah. West Texas way. You couldn't scurry away fast enough? Man, I don't know. <laughs> Jackrabbits? You're Get- laughing at that? <laughs> Get her out of here. <laughs> I'm here to stay. Like I said. Deal with it. It's you Ralph's- know you want to laugh. Ralph Strangis on Coke. <laughs> It's Julie without alcohol. It's <laughs> unbelievable. So they had 61 earthquakes out in Scurry County, Julie, in seven days. 61? Yeah. Wow. It makes me think we might be playing a little fast and loose with what is an earthquake. You know? Yeah. Yeah. You know, rock falls. You're like, oh, 1.2. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah what, what, Back what in is, my day, people had to die. What's it on the R scale? <laughs> no. No. I'm not letting you get away with R scale for Richter scale. The Richter scale. <laughs> I don't think so, bub. He's just going to be speaking in full letters soon. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You don't know me. Um, 
So I'm reading a book to my son. This has to do with earthquakes. Okay. And this happened to me just last night because you're talking about back in the day when the earthquakes killed people and that's how you could quantify it as an earthquake. It's like an I survived series is what it's called. And it's about these like big catastrophic moments in history from a kid's perspective. And I start reading the book, like the first... Just like a bedtime story? Yeah. Like, I, uh, I was, was in the Holocaust. I thought... So I was really... It was, yeah, it was exactly. the morning of September 11th. <laughs> but That's the, seriously what it is. <laughs> it but was he, take your son to work day. <laughs> he wanted to order these NASDAQ. books. <laughs> and you'll learn, anytime they want to read a book or buy a book, you get excited and you're like, yes, I want you to read. So I will buy you whatever book because I want you to read and not want to or go stare at your screen or whatever. Anton LaVey's Satanic Bible? Well, probably not that. I probably wouldn't do that. Found but it. I'm trying to get him on <laughs> chapter books because um, he's old enough to. And so How old he is said he? last night, he's nine. Okay, yeah. It seems like he was old enough to five years ago, but go ahead. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. Damn. Dude. Am I wrong? I don't know. Chapter books? I don't know. At I four? actually don't know. No. I don't know, Julie. They don't do that. They're just. I think you're a great mom. Forward. Yeah, you're the best. Well, you know, we're you're like. You're your 9 11 book. <laughs> Thanks. We're. Approaching the school year very quick, and this is when moms start to be like, "Okay, start reading, start writing. Let's pretend like we've been you practicing can't, all summer." Can't, a week can't cram read. Well, that's what I'm doing. Okay, if I'm being honest, they, uh, yeah, the teachers all want you to do that. All they summer. tell you at the end of the year, and they yeah. give you packets. Nowadays, they'll give you like a website. Go to this website; it'll tell you what you should be doing with your kid at this age. And you're like, yes, yes, okay. And then it's the end of the summer, and I'm like, oh crap, we haven't done any of this. So I'm trying to get him to read. <laughs> You've been so busy at read. the club. <laughs> yeah, we've been partying so hard. Golf camp. <laughs> so I'm trying to get him to read. I'm trying to defend my uh, you choice last of night. letting him read this book. Yes. So last night I'm like, okay, what chapter book do you want to start? And he's like, how about this one? We bought it at the book fair and we haven't opened it. And that was a long time ago. So I'm like, okay, wants to read this. I survived uh, the San Francisco earthquake of whenever the big giant one was. <laughs> anyway, we start 40? reading it. What do you it. think, Rob? 40s? Uh, oh, I thought yeah. no. The during the World Series, right? The nineties? Yeah. No, it was in the forties. Oh. There was one oh. back then that killed. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. So I'm reading it, and it's like the perspective of an eleven year old boy, and it's you know he's in his house, and and he's kind of talking about all these gay dudes are running around. They're really upset. <laughs> 1906. Way back then. You think the 40s? Gay people didn't exist in the 40s, right? It was actually 1906, I want to say. <laughs> um, but yes, they are. They, of course, they're... You, you, but they yes, kept it it's, hidden. Yes, it's, it's people existed. I don't think they were just I gay know, guys man. running around I think they just being got invented. gay in the 40s and freaking people out, like, or whatever you said. How did we I start thought the talking Democrats about this? invented gay. Just because of these earthquakes in West Texas? So it's just... How'd your son take it? Okay, What's so I start reading story? it. I'm trying to get there. He keeps doing this, not me. I know, man. What's so up with him? I'm trying to read him a little bed st- bedtime story. I'm excited that he wants to read. And like the first chapter we get through, and it basically this lead character, who's an 11-year-old boy, gets buried alive. How buried he, alive. Well, how did he tell the story then? Yeah. Well, he was telling it from his perspective. So it's like all of a sudden the no, earthquake. all of a sudden it ends mid-sentence. The, earth, <laughs> the earthquake stops and he's Just like. ten more blank pages. <laughs> it's like, you know, I was hit by a brick and then I was hit by this. And then I started getting, I couldn't breathe. And Good God. It was, I'm laying there reading to my son. I'm like, this is terrible. It's one of the things like that you don't think about with parenting or whatever when you come across these instances with your child and you're in the middle of a book and I, I had to finish my sentence when I saw what it was going to be. Like, you can't stop down and not finish your sentence. I lie all the time. Yeah, just start making it up. I lie about what's it. If I don't... He can, yeah, read, he can read, No. That's the I problem. I skipped over a few things because we kept going. I was like, I got to give this context. I can't get to... And then he was buried alive. Good night, buddy. I'll see you in the morning. Jeez. So we kept reading like another chapter in to try and give it context. That's the funeral? That's when I started omitting... Because anyways, that's why I started omitting things and he was calling me out like, mom, why'd you skip those words? Why'd you skip this, this, that sentence? I'm like, because this is a terrible story, but I was in too deep to the story. I couldn't quit. It was a big conundrum. And there's my earthquake story. You guys going to cover the Gaza Strip tonight or what's the, (laughs) what's on the dock? Titanic is up next. Good grief. (laughs) But it's a cool way for them to learn about history. But yeah, it was a little much. (laughs) We had some earthquakes. (laughs) 
a uh, commission in North Texas, Dan. I know you love these. There's a commission, a committee. A commission is forming a committee of business and community leaders. They will be looking into issues related to resorts and casino gambling, pushing for legalization during the 2025 legislative session. Okay, so we now own a business, as you know, right? At least partly, Mm -hmm. somewhat. We're in business. We're learning about business, quarterly taxes. Mm -hmm. It's fun. I should be doing that. Would a committee ever choose us to be on their business and community leaders committee? Absolutely not. Like, I'm a business leader. And you see, the guy who typically hears us talk business is the guy who's laughing the loudest right now. (laughs) Jeez. In the background. That's like the hardest he's laughed all day (laughs) was the concept of us being anywhere near business decisions. A business leader. No, no, less. no, I'm not even a business. One of the leaders in our community. Follower, minion, no. Mm. No, I don't think so. I'm out there, though. If anybody wants someone to join their committee, just to give that this perspective, mm-hmm. hit me up. I want to say something. I want to, I want to compliment my partner, okay? I started this story roughly 90 seconds ago. He's used the word... I used the word twice. He's used it three times. I've thought of how tiny it is. He's used to, we've used the word committee five times, and it's at no very point has small. he said, is it a small committee? How small? It's incredibly small. <laughs> Are you aware of that, uh, Julie? I don't think so. The size of the committee? No. He, see, he was jonesing. It's not large. I had to let him do it. It's very tiny. How tiny? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it just clicked. Yeah. We still do that? No, we don't. Uh, he does. <laughs> There's one man alive keeping the itty bitty committee, itty bitty titty committee yeah. alive, and it's it's him. He's the only one. He's doing the Lord's that work. That works over the here. word bit and tit into yeah. it. And that's yeah. what we're all about. Dan and Julie, bits and tits. Jeez. <laughs> Still so shocking. Weekdays at nine. Okay. Uh, Can we do an everyday bits and tits? Probably just once a week. Sans, which yeah, is of we course don't the oversaturate uh, the world with bits and tits. Sans <laughs> is the owner of the Mavericks now, basically. You know the Miriam Adelson lady that I told you about. Yeah, the, yeah. The, her, her son Patrick Dumont. Yeah, son of all is the controlling funny. owner. They have hired seventy six lobbyists and spent almost seven million dollars in the last couple of years lobbying the state legislation to get this done, and that means they will. Seven million? I think there's probably an amount you can, like a, a, a yeah. certain amount you can spend, probably. But yeah, it's within two years, there will be a casino, at least under construction, in the heart of DFW. It's kind of awesome. Probably more than one. And this is what we figured would happen, but they're really making it happen. How's that going to affect traffic? <laughs> what? <laughs> I mean, probably. <laughs> I'm not going to help. Oh, by the way, you would have been very happy. He's already stressed about the traffic from two years from now. Yeah. When I went to I that, like to plan, uh, plan ahead. Uh-huh. When I went to that comedy show on Friday, Dan, you would have been pleased. Big time progress on that entrance into Fort Worth downtown situation. You really? Know, With all the orange you, barrels? You know, it's been terrible for like 18 years. Yeah. They've done some work. Really? But I would say traffic is probably not going to be improved by putting a resort destination casino in the middle of town. Like, it's at that Irving area, right? Irving area, they own that. It could possibly be across from the AAC. There's some land they own back there. Were you with me when someone was telling us that Jerry Jones has bought a lot of land around Waxahachie? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I wasn't with you, but I've heard that before. Yeah, when we were down there? Yeah, when we did a show down there. Tom, I think it was, told us that. Well, I think this will be cool. Down for a big... Dallas Resort. You want to no, have a big casino? No, you won't think that when it's here. I, I think stuff like that is cool. It's good for our city. What? Is it? You How buy is that? that good for the city? It's stuff to do. Tourism. People come in here instead of us having to fly to Vegas every time we want something like that. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't know, it's man. It's just I, an opinion. I think don't just... you fly to Vegas, though, also <laughs> for the... Because you're not going to run into anybody that you know. Like, you want to... Yeah. Be away. Yeah. What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Yeah. That whole thing. Yeah, I don't know. Man. It seems weird. To, if I were just someone who lived somewhere else and I had the option of flying to go to a casino, like why would I want to go to Irving? Is there already like, a I'd casino go to Oklahoma. slash sporting uh, facility? Does that exist? 
What do you? Because uh, this no, could not be the first really. ever. Like, there's going to be an NBA arena that might happen inside the casino, basically. Yeah. Yes. You know that's. You'll have happen. to walk through the casino to get to your. They probably will have a way where you can go around it, but yes, I do think we're. That's right, because kids. Yeah. In, in inside ten years, you've got an arena, a hotel, and a casino all on one site, and it'll probably happen here first. I know. But don't go buying any marijuana. No. Ah. Uh. I know uh, I haven't been to a Golden Knights game, but I know it's like you can gamble. It's not in the casino. They don't play in the middle of a casino, but you can gamble all around the game. It's near yeah. casinos. And apparently the vibe is just totally insane and awesome. It is. We went. Like you could do You've slots been? and yeah. whatever, or just like they have actual slot machines in the concourse? Uh, I don't recall. I think so, maybe, actually. I didn't and go to a Vegas like, game, did I? You did. <laughs> you did. I don't remember that. You don't remember like the whole thing before the the game starts. They got it's like a Vegas show on ice. They have dancers and yeah, stuff. Yeah, they got yeah. a guy. It's like medieval times on ice. How could you forget? Did this? I like it? I don't. You know, I don't. Was I fired up? It was really, really cool. Okay. I guess you'll just have to take it. my word for it. Yeah, I'm glad Jake remembers stuff for me. <laughs> yeah. Did you guys see the story about? Um, this drug trafficker in El Paso that got arrested, his name is uh, Ishmael Zambada. He is the son of El Chapo. Oh. And he goes by El Mayo. Sweet. Or probably, yeah, El Mayo. So he got on a plane. Mayonnaise? It's hard. Yeah, I mean, I think El Mayo, like I would constantly be thinking of mayonnaise when I talk to you, and that's not that intimidating no <laughs> that's what you think of when you talk to me so they somehow convinced I, I guess they tricked him into getting on a plane thinking that he was headed one place and uh you know it's like a private plane and the pilot took him to el paso and landed where he was promptly arrested mm. i think that, that would be a really cool job to, like the bait criminal part but not the part where you actually have to maybe get shot and get your head cut off by the cartel yeah, like, like that pilot do, man doing little tricks. Oh yeah, no, he's that guy has to be in witness to... protection, or they just had so much on him, right? That's yeah. why he did it. Yeah, maybe. I've seen enough TV. It reminds me of us being in court. <laughs> what part? When the they took a break so we could eat our little sandwiches, and then they sentenced the guy to X amount of years for drug trafficking. Oh yeah. Yeah, that had, judge was, was busy that day. He had been working on, I swear to God, this is the funniest thing that's probably ever happened to me in hindsight, is that we're sitting there talking about the podcast, and they're playing audio of me and Dan dicking around, and oh then gosh. they let us go for lunch in the courtroom. So awkward. It was so awkward. And then they let us go for lunch. They bring a guy in who's a, uh, a cartel mule. And he had to do it because otherwise he was going to get probably into some trouble with them. They sentenced him to something like 20 years. And then she's, she's like, all right, we're going to start back up. And I swear to God, we pick back up with, all right, so right now we're on what is a definition of a podcast? Right. <laughs> and I'm like, it seemed what to, just happened? It seemed to pale in comparison. <laughs> like, this guy's going away forever. <laughs> His life is in danger. He's requesting to be put in a certain prison where he thinks he's safer. And then we're just like, but we're behind a paywall. Yeah. <laughs> this is the most ridiculous shit I've ever seen in my life. I was like, what are we doing here? Um, let's see. Do I have anything else I want to tell you guys about? Oh, one quick thing. Don't know why I left. Uh -oh, uh, you left on the record. We, I was going to bring this up earlier. When we were talking about Celine Dion. Were you guys aware of stiff person syndrome? I mean, <laughs> what? She made me aware of it. Did she talk about it? She's talked about it in the past. She's had it for a couple of years. Yeah. <laughs> so I remember the first time I heard about it, it was like, what in the world? And it's just like it sounds. Yeah. Go on. Uh, I guess it's just like a nerve. You know, you have chronic pain. You become less mobile. You can't like... You have spasms. That. You can't, uh, you know, move your back in certain ways. You're, you're kind stiff. Of, yeah, you're kind of a stiff person anyways, though, so I don't really know if I'd notice. Yeah. You can't wake up before 8. <laughs> it's a very, very specific. 
I just thought it, it was attacks that part of the nerve system. I thought it was such a uh, and it make it stiff person syndrome. You can't get up before eight, and you cannot resist an itty bitty committee, <laughs> right? <laughs> joke at all costs. Um, it sounds terrible, um, but it also sounds hilarious. <laughs> Let's be honest. They so it, it just that's all it means. It means you're kind of like stiff, like yeah, it's pain because you can't like release tension in your nerves and you can't move, you know, in certain directions. So you're going to get sore. Mm. You know, if you couldn't move in certain ways, so you but, just have to sit. Yeah, or Boy, that sounds like the greatest disease. <laughs> Don't say you're that. not allowed to go anywhere. I think I can't go, guys. I just assumed this was like a got the whole stiff person thing. <laughs> I just assumed this was like a you know how there's diseases like a like what is Lou Gehrig's disease? Uh, ALS, right? Okay, so I just assumed whatever that stands that for that there was a better name for stiff man syndrome. I just assumed that was like the parlance of you know the layman. Yeah. It's not. It's SPS. They don't have, but they don't have. Like, really? That's what yes. the doctors named it? Yes. SP- they well. don't have like a medical name for it that is hard to pronounce or something. It's yeah. just, it's, they're just like, man, this guy is stiff. <laughs> they just, they need LeBron. I know what we'll call it. They need <laughs> LeBron person. to get it. Be the like LeBron, LeBron. LeBron James disease or something. They need someone famous to get it. Yeah. Well, if it's Celine Dion's pretty Celine famous. Dion. The Celine Dion. Yeah. yeah. Go through a little. PR but they didn't, they didn't like, rename Parkinson's Back to the Future or anything. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> so the under, tr- under treatment, it says no evidence-based treatment has been found for SBS, which is a boo, right? Yep. We can't, can't figure out how to stop it. Uh, but then it says, nor have any controlled trials of treatment for the condition been conducted. So they haven't even, <laughs> even tried. Okay, they so tried. Yeah. <laughs> Could Jeez. still be hope. I'm just going to let all these people be stiff and not even try <laughs> no, to help No, there's no hope. Uh, but we also haven't tried yet. All right, so there might be hope. <sighs> the Dumb Zone News. Got his ass. Like <laughs> and subscribe. <laughs> The Dumb Zone presents... Oh, wait. Where'd that I woman has a hat on that says Chappie. I love it. I can't, oh, I can't, can't stop looking at it. That's amazing. She has a Chappie hat? Yeah. I don't even know we had that. I swear to God, though, if I got one of those, my dad would wear it. <laughs> Are they for sale? Did Raymond get that? Because Raymond will hear no. us say something and then... Did you have be... it made? Oh, your neighbor oh. already had it. My dad has a Chappie that license is awesome. plate. Chappie license from Chappaquiddick. She ah. said, "Oh, okay. You know, Ted Kennedy once killed a lady there." <laughs> Kemp spin. It's true. But the so good you're news, proving you hold can on, here's the thing. A city. Here's the thing. After he did it, they got him out of the government. And he was not a senator for actually. Another no, th- they uh, reelected him like seven more times, if not huh. more. After the murder. Yeah, hmm. but. I'm learning something new. You know, they did say that's what held him back from the White House. I do know that. He like he'll never be president because of that. Yeah, but we're gonna, we're still going to make him like the senior senator for one of the bigger states. Yeah, and he's on all the committees, no matter what size. <laughs> he was a big part of it. Yeah. Uh huh. So today is Monday, <laughs> July 29th, Everyone. Six days from now, we'll be on an RV. At Six seven days from now at eight a.m. 7 a.m. Uh, Eastern time. I always go by Eastern time, so I'm on board with what Rob said. Never known someone so scared of 7 a.m. That's well, what 7 time the world 7 a.m. Eastern start. time is six o'clock Central, though. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to leave two hours early? Oh wait. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Thought you were slick, huh? <laughs> On this day in 1981, Brit- uh, Britain's Prince Charles married Lady Diana Spencer. In a ceremony at St. Paul's Cathedral in London. So I was a little kid at this point, and I remember this was a thing where people were waking up at whatever way before 8 a.m. to to watch this. (laughs) Yeah. And I did not understand why. Still don't understand it. Um, But they ended up living happily ever after, a uh, wonderful relationship. Actually, Dan. Um, he was carrying on multiple affairs, and then uh, she died in a car crash. Hmm. I like Dan's version better. On this day in 1986, a federal jury in New York found the NFL did commit an antitrust violation against the rival United States Football League. 
The jury ordered the NFL to pay $3 to the USFL. So they won. That's a yay. But at what cost? Yes, and then they got the boot. Was Trump involved in that part? Yes. Um, The Jeff Perlman book on the USFL is very good. And it does detail how Trump kind of came in. It was designed to be a spring football league and spring football only because they just said, we just wouldn't be able to compete in the fall for sure, not with the NFL. And then you also have college football, but there is an insatiable appetite. It, like even back in the 80s, they knew in, in the, uh, this country needs more football. So what if we had a spring professional league and they just wanted to be that? And Trump came in and convinced enough of the other owners, we should be going head-to-head against the NFL. Now, in Jeff Perlman's telling of it, Trump had been turned down a couple of times previously. He had tried to buy NFL franchises. Yeah. But it's a very exclusive uh, old boys club, and they can deny you for any reason they want. And they just didn't feel that uh, his ilk should be... Along with the Maras and the Roonies and the, you know, the old stodgy guys who... Yeah. Um, no, it's a popular thing to say online, but had they just let him buy the bills, none of this would have happened. <laughs> yeah, possibly. The uh, And, yes, yeah, so, like, then he got into the USFL, and then his... Uh, apparently his vision was just like the AFL did with the NFL hey, we're going to compete. We're going to uh, try signing players that they want and all that. We're going to go head-to-head against them, and eventually they will absorb us, and I'll be an NFL owner. Didn't work out that way. That was the uh, theory, yeah. And so they did all the competing, went head-to-head and all that, but then it just became too, too rich for the blood of all the other owners. Like, we can't afford to do this. We can't. We're not making the money the NFL is, so we can't. But they were drafting, you know, Steve Young uh, signed him to a 10-year contract at $1 million a year. But back then, it was that was a huge deal. Anyway, where am I? <laughs> Today in history. On this day in 1940, a guy named John Sigmund of St. Louis, Missouri, completed a 292-mile swim down the Mississippi River. Damn. Was there poop in it? Probably lots. It took him 89 hours and 48 minutes. I mean, all the animals poop in there all the time, right? hours. That's true. So does that mean he got out and rested and stuff? That's weak. Took a nap. I wouldn't do that. If I was going to swim the Mississippi River. You won't even get on an RV at 7 (laughs) a.m. He's right. He's right. On this day in 1936, the Boston Red Sox became the first baseball team to fly from one city to another. They went from St. Louis to Chicago. Five players refused to do so, so they took the train instead. Yeah, I would have been six. Like back in 1936, you're like, really? (laughs) Okay, it flies? It's totally safe? (laughs) Wow. I don't think so. I'll see you guys at the train station. And on this day in 1991, Jose Canseco, playing for the A's, uh, was pelted by debris from Yankee fans because in the early morning, the paparazzi took photos of him leaving Madonna's apartment. So Jose Canseco was hooking up with Madonna. And so why was everybody mad at him about it? I don't know. Yeah, that seems like I would have been like, hey, high good, five. Good job. <laughs> yeah. Thumbs up. <laughs> Uh, other famous weddings on this date, besides Prince Charles and Lady Di, are kind of the Prince Charles and Lady Di of my generation. Uh, in the year 2000, Brad Pitt and Jennifer, Jennifer Aniston got married on this day. That one didn't last either. No. She would go on to... Co-star. Co-star, yes. She's not just the star, but a great show called The Morning Show on mm-hmm. Apple TV. You ever watch that? Yep. Was there a doubt? Of course she does. Julie had, had seen that? No. <laughs> Did they have a like a portmanteau, like a name, like Benifer or something? Did they have a... Um, Aniston Pittston? and Pitt. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Has Reese Witherspoon ever been in anything that you haven't seen? Yeah. 
There was this one, I was getting a blowout the other day, and a movie popped on that she was in. You know that's a thing, in. by the way, Dan. It's a hair thing. It's a hair thing. I was getting a blowout. Okay. It was yeah. before a wedding. I don't know. I want to get a blowout. I was Brazilian. trying to. I had to go to a wedding, and I wanted to look nice. Oh, Anyways, how was the wedding? It was good. Do you know she went to Jamie's wedding at the place where I'm going Yeah. after camp? Jamie who? Jamie uh, Benn. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, I do. Uh, I do. So I was uh, trying yeah. to... Wait, excuse me? <laughs> do you... to love and to be <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Don't do this. Can you speak up? And sickness and health. Uh, 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 I can't con- I can't say I can't sign off on this unless I hear you say I do. No, I, I, I do. Uh. No, no, I, I, I do. Uh. No, you got to move your mouth. Well, that eliminates the other question I had. Was it a dry wedding? There's absolutely no way that. No. no people don't have dry weddings. No. That is like a one in a million thing. Really? Yeah. No, I think y'all. You're. It was not a dry wedding. Go to the church crowd. It was a very wet wedding. Blake is familiar with dry weddings. <laughs> well, interestingly, I'm familiar with his wedding. You know wedding, what I mean? And you're not. <laughs> there was a lot of booze. God damn it. <laughs> I got an ace in the hole, bud. <laughs> Are you done with your story? Well, the point was is that there was a Reese <laughs> Witherspoon movie on at the place that I didn't know. And that's my story. But she, like, hooks up with... Like a, she's a mom of two, and she goes out on her birthday and gets all crazy and hooks up with some young dude. And she had like a wild night, and then the young dude. It's all about her falling in love with the young guy. Oh, okay. that was the one Reese Witherspoon movie I think I haven't seen. That before. sounds awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See election. Yes. <laughs> on this day, uh, divorce on this day in history in 2016, <laughs> Amy Poehler and Will Arnett. That's tough. And uh, they say that div- uh, he divorced her after he realized she had nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, did she get to keep half of his funny? <laughs> Today's birthdays. Cowboys quarterback Rain Dakota Prescott is 31. Wow. wow. Did you guys know that? Rain. No. Wow, I did not know that. Yes, his real name is Rain. So R-A-Y-N-E. think they're partying at training camp? They're doing some kind of gay thing with cake, and right? They're, they're doing some kind of... Oh, was that the cake that Isaac Alarcone wanted? Yeah. I okay. want cake. I want cake. Well, I'm no, so pie in his face. if you remember, this was on Hard Knocks once because Zeke's birthday was a week ago today. Remember they were like trying to out-gift each yes. other, with, and Zeke was trying to wrap a package. Yes. Good callback. Which was the most I have ever related to Ezekiel Elliott. Ezekiel, <laughs> he was completely confused. Gift wrapping is tough. Dude, I pay harder for it than now. It, harder than you think it is. I pay for it. I don't even take it out of the Amazon box. I'll what just do you give mean? them the... You give them the Amazon it comes box? Pre, yeah, it comes pre-wrapped. There you go. <laughs> but like in that big green bag though, right? Like you buy the gift wrap from Amazon? No. You give them an Amazon box for a present? There you Come go. On, Blake. That's pretty, pretty pathetic. You guys, you guys take it out of the box to put it in another box? Now that's weird. <laughs> I at least wrap the box. <laughs> Even if you that want, would be bad. but it comes in this nice brown color. Oh gosh! <laughs> I take it to the I take it to Hallmark. It's like two bucks a package. Really? Yeah. And they're they're, they're these are the pros. They got the best. I didn't know that. Yeah. I was thinking like the That's a good the toy store hack. or whatever, the local toy store. They they would have a wrapping thing. <laughs> yeah. But yes, there's nothing better than that. How's Hallmark sto- stores doing? Well, it's probably can't, something better than that. Can't be doing <laughs> like, well. I think the movies. Like, I would think they're all the going out of business because my wife always comes home with. She's like, "Oh, I saw a Hallmark. She'll buy like stuff. Oh, she doesn't. Yeah, yeah. I'll need these in next, you know, Arbor Day or whatever. I'm like, well, I, <laughs> no, you're not going to need that know, ever. It feels like I was at Hallmark a lot as a kid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Same. Weird. Do you give cards now? Um. Yeah. Yeah. You give a nice little card yeah, in your the, Amazon get box the, present. <laughs> get the kid to write their version of what they think their name looks like, you know. Yeah. Oh, that's always a good one. Yeah, oh. That's cute. Or if you forget that's a present, just have your kid draw a picture. And they can't I, be unhappy. I dip my dog's paw in ink. <laughs> what? And I have the dog. No, I don't. <laughs> just, we've made fun of those people before. We did a dog paw in the, the clay. Was it after your dog passed away? 
Yeah, yeah he, took a, he took dead a dead dog. dog. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all laugh, but he I... He took a dead dog to a pottery place and was just like... Y'all laugh, <laughs> but rot- they do that. It's rotting. I have Are a pop serious? print from Blueberry after she died. You took a dead cat. I didn't do it. The place where they we took the body did it. Okay, that's a little less weird than if you... No, it's not. You had to give him a dead cat. <laughs> Did they just shove well, no, its they... head in there? Like, here's a, I did a, a mold of its face. You got to turn it. No, it's the paw. It's uh, up on our mantle. It's Blueberry's paw print. Oh, man. <laughs> Walk in there, they're like, what's that smell? <laughs> <laughs> like, still a couple of hairs in it. Oh. <laughs> it helps with the pain, okay? Yeah. I just remember the day your cat died, and Dan was stricken. Y'all were there. <laughs> they were like, Blueberry, that's a stupid name. <laughs> <laughs> or was. You were not sensitive to the death of Blueberry. Mm. I showed up for work, I'll have you know. Oh, man. I fought through my tears. If I just always think I'm the wrong guy if you want someone to be sensitive to your, like, oh, something bad happened. I didn't like it. Like, you shouldn't even tell me about I it. I wasn't dying for you to be sensitive about it, but you didn't have to be completely insensitive. Your computer went off again. Oh my what gosh. is your, how much do you have it on? What's the I rotation? I have no clue. Okay, you're I a lady. I never set it to anything. You're a lady. It's factory settings. Yes. <laughs> That's why you're, it's, your browser is so small. Look at how little the. I'm trying not to look. Like, Whatever she Guys, has going why on. Are there. Why are all ladies distracted? the exact same? Is that same? better? That's kind of better, but you and you're right. You have a win- over he has a she has a Windows thing on a Mac. I do. Why? Because this is how it it came. What the? F- no. <laughs> From the place where we- there was a day where she got the computer that she didn't want to learn a new operating system, so she just stuck with Windows. I can't tell you all the real reason. I'll tell you off the air. All right. Uh oh. It's a, sex, a story. it's a sex thing. There's a story. Uh, former <laughs> Ranger. <laughs> sex thing. What could that be? Why would that deal with it? Anyways, former know. Ranger. <laughs> Mike Adams is 46. Good friend of ours. We had him on. Yeah. <laughs> he was on the bang bus. Letty's bang bus. Mm-hmm. With his son. Yeah. Um, Toss him back some coal boys. It's a bus. That they drive every year to Rangers uh, opening day. Who does? A guy named Letty. Okay. And he invited us out there oh. to broadcast from the bus, and we oh, did. Oh, yeah, I heard about y'all day. being out there this past opening day. Did Everyone was talking things? about it. Everybody yeah. talking about it. Uh, Steve Pallor, former Cowboy, is 62. Boxing trainer Teddy Atlas is 68. Legend. Actress Rachel Miner is 44. Rachel Miner. <laughs> I had to do it. Sorry, Jer. <laughs> Jared didn't like that. <laughs> I had to do it. Had it to says do it. leading role in Bully. I had to do it. Don't care. No apologies. I don't know what Bully is, but I oh, do know it was... Uh, gnarly. What's his name? Tyson Chandler, I think, took his wife to Bully on their first date. Do you remember that story? No, that's Belly. <laughs> belly? Are you serious? <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. <laughs> I'm sorry. (laughs) You're right. (laughs) I don't know what belly or bully is. Are you? What? I don't. What's belly? Bully is. uh, Don't we know the guy that wrote bully? Um, I'm pretty sure. Yes. Who is it? Uh, It's not Shropshire, is it? No. Uh, the, the, The is it the observer guy? Jim Shoots. Yeah. What wrote the book. Yeah. Which I've read. Okay. Or, and I've seen this movie, but no. You, you need to go watch Belly. Okay, so Tyson Chandler not involved in this movie at all. <laughs> no. And I think his story was that, yeah, you know, it's a pretty, Belly's pretty, pretty gnarly. They both are pretty gnarly, really, but it's not exactly a rom-com. Mm. First date movie. I guess you need to know what you're working with, though. Ken Burns is 71. <laughs> Getty Lee is 71. Is that Rush? Rush. Jake Smollett is 35. <laughs> Empire brother? Jussie's brother. Actor Jesus. Will Wheaton is 52. Why do I know him? Will Wheaton. Stand By Me or Star Thank Trek you. The Next Generation? Well, then I probably don't know him. No. You never saw Stand By Me? Me? Yeah. Hell no. I don't know. No. 
Why are you yelling at me? It's too cool for that. Danger Mouse is 47. That what? is greatness. Do you think that's his real name? I don't. Mm. I don't. Never done the Grey album. Check it out. And it's uh, the White Album by the Beatles and the Black Album by Jay-Z. As one. Oh, yeah? Wow. Mm-hmm. Is it great? Cool. It's awesome. Hmm. Okay. Do that for me, Blake, will you? And then uh, I have a Kemp spin on this name. Okay. Allison Mack is 42. It says she's a Smallville actress. Now, it doesn't say Kemp spin, but there's something listed that looks like a Kemp spin. I don't know. You ever heard of her? She's on the list. Oh, so Jake has brought it up. Yeah. And now look who can't remember something. Oh, oh perfect memory guy. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm always saying. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. When we talked about the, the, the cult, right? She was like in that sex cult. Yes. The Nick Says here arrested for sex trafficking. Yeah, oh. it was like that NXIVM or something. <clears throat> it was a sex cult, and they arrested a bunch of people, and they were selling people for sex. Sweet. Were you into Smallville? No. My buddy Brevig was like obsessed with that show. I heard it was good. I never really understood it. Was I'm it like, on the so WB? It's super, it's, I think I tried it like once and I was like, it was. Yeah, it's a very WB. WB show. Very WB. Yeah. I hated all that stuff. Like You hate everything Superman, right? Buffy. Pretty oh, much everything Buffy. that was Oh, happening. any WB thing? Yeah, I wasn't into... I mean, there were a couple like early on, but like the mystical nature of all of it was just like, what is this? That was One Tree Bullsh. Hill. Angel. Uh-huh. Oh, Angel. <laughs> the spinoff of Buffy. Yep. Because Angel was Charmed. hot back in the day. Dawson's Creek. You were into that. You had to be into that. The only reason you watch Dawson's Creek is to possibly secure yourself a handy. And every, oh, okay. All and every, right. everyone in here knows I'm right. Yeah, you're a little bit older. <laughs> so the point was, is I never watched Dawson's Creek. <laughs> <laughs> At least he's honest. <laughs> what was my... Oh, Desperate Housewives was mine. Yeah. That was big when that came out. Yeah. What was big? Handies? Desperate no, Housewives. just the show you'd oh. watch with your high school girlfriend. Oh, yeah, okay. Just the show. Eva Longoria, everyone thought she was so hot. Yeah. Yeah. What else? Born on this day, now dead, <laughs> Captain Lou Albano. Says here, wrestler. Yeah. I thought you'd get all fired up when I said that. You didn't. I'm from the Attitude Era. Clara <laughs> Bow, B-O-W, maybe Bo. She was like the original It Girl. It says sex symbol... In the 1920s. Good. They must have been desperate, bro. What's, her, na- I'm, what's her name? Clara I'm not, I'm Bow. B O W. <laughs> they must have been desperate, bro. <laughs> if this counts as the, you know. It's over their eyes. Uh, Is that uh, how hot a woman could get if indeed there was no cosmetic surgery? Oh, interesting. Like the level of hotness has just escalated that much because of yeah. all of the help women can get now. Right. Do you think genetics are better now because people in the past have had surgery? <laughs> <laughs> he Walter makes a, Hunt. He makes a good point. He was makes that, a good point. Was that your point? Walter Hunt, born on this day now, dead, <laughs> the inventor of the sewing machine and the safety pin. That's pretty solid. Yeah. And that'd be cool if you invented the safety pin <laughs> set for life. And Tony Sirico. That's Polly Walnuts. This is his birthday. Mm. Uh, died Greatest. on this day, still dead. You have Mama Cass Elliot <clears throat> from the Mamas and the Papas, who I think I've always heard died eating a ham sandwich. <laughs> That's definitely not true. <laughs> Maybe on the toilet, but I don't know. I think she was all fat and stuff. <laughs> she was a large woman there at that is. age. Yeah. 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 What? It, what's better, Clara Bow or Mama Cass Elliot? Which one would you, Julie? <laughs> I wouldn't either. Well, let's say you had to though. No, to save I the lives of your kids. I could tell you which kids. one I think is more attractive. To save the lives of your kids, you have to scissor to one either. of them. <laughs> You're saving the... Okay, you don't want to save the life of your kid. Great. 
<laughs> what did you just do to me? You Go can't home do and that. read him another. My kids cannot be involved in this book. conversation. <laughs> Uh, also died on this day, still dead, Vincent Van Gogh. <laughs> now, <laughs> when do you think Vincent oh, Van Gogh this, died? This a, has to be a trick question. No, I don't think it. it oh, no, but he, he knows we're going to think of Picasso dying yeah. in like the 80s. Yeah. <laughs> give me a, a 10 year window. 10 year? How about 100 years? I'll give you 10 on either side of his death day. Okay. I'm going to go with Vincent Van Gogh. I'm going to say uh, 1610. Yeah, what? I was going to go 1650. <clears throat> now, Vincent Van Gogh d- uh, committed suicide. Hmm. He also cut his own ear off, right? Cut his Barely own ear off. Abroad. That was this version. That I was, saw a lot of Vincent that, Van Gogh stuff in That Amsterdam. was the standby <laughs> me of his time. <laughs> right. <laughs> you I don't went hold to, the boom box. You just cut your ear I off. I think there's a Van Gogh museum is in Amsterdam <laughs> yeah. because he uh, was stoked on Amsterdam or he was from there or something. Anyway, we killed uh, uh, some time there. So he died at the age of 37. Had he lived like a normal, I guess, you know, 60, 80 year life, Vincent Van Gogh would have. Been able to watch Babe Ruth. No. What? Hit 60 home runs. He died in 1890. Damn. Are you serious? I was going to guess 1900. Oh, felt, after the fact. Oh, yeah, okay. No, I was. Well, like, like, gonna, I did it because did everyone I felt in here like know I was this? so far off whenever y'all of said yours. Austin I was like, Zip, I'm not saying a word because I believed y'all would be closer. <laughs> but I was actually close. And that was today Here you go, Dan. in history. You want to know how many times I've heard a lady say, I was actually close? <laughs> All right, that's it for this week. Again, we hit the road on Sunday and doing our show Monday and Tuesday from the DZRV. Probably audio only due to limited internet access, but we'll see. We'll arrive in Oxnard on Wednesday, then a straight week from Cowboys training camp with a few other stops along the way. Maybe Neptune's net? Should be a full week of shows next week. No need for a business Wednesday, right? Fairly certain we'll do a wrap-up too. Maybe we'll get Dan on. Maybe. So we'll do this again next Saturday. All right, going to enjoy my last little bit of Halo and NCAA before being on an RV with Dan and Jake for two weeks. Wish me luck. We'll talk soon.